Hallelujah. Keep praying. Shiba kota sita bala da bala. Dembro tu supra tu sabara da bala. Rapa kota supra tiki di bala da bala. Lord, you are changing our lives. In the name of Jesus, you are changing our lives. In the name of Jesus, we'll never be the same. You are making mysteries out of us. Hallelujah. 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 I really want to commend our seriousness. When God calls you to dwell in His presence every day, it's because He's doing something in your life. Hallelujah. Please sit down for a few minutes. I just want to encourage us and then we will pray. Hallelujah. One of the... Please, those outside, make sure you participate. One of the killers of grace, one of the killers of impact, one of the killers of a life of color and beauty, is pride, vain glory. I have seen in my little life, I've seen people rise to the top and crash back. Hallelujah. One of the, one of the, the worst comments that can be made about a man is, I remember the days when this person used to be mighty. There are pastors with those kinds of testimonies. I remember when the hand of God used to be upon my life. I remember when ministry used to expand. I taught a message, I think two or three years ago, called The Secret of Sustained Glory. Please, you can get it after the service and listen to it. There is nothing as ugly as tasting increase, greatness, honor, and crashing down and becoming a monument of warning to others. And they say, beware of so, so, so person. Pride. Let me tell you something. It's my personal opinion. Now, sin is sin. But if I were to arrange sin, I consider pride to be worse than fornication. Hallelujah. Pride. That, that mystery that has destroyed people. You see, let me tell you something. When God begins to lift you, Satan is not a fool. He will study your vulnerability. You are not given to women. Satan will not carry a lady and come and destroy you. He knows that you have built capacity to resist it. He will not use money. But he knows that enshrined in every man is the desire to receive the accolades of men. And this is where the mighty fall. What a woman may not be able to do in the life of a man or, the, or a man as it is. What money may not be able to do. What persecution will not be able to do. You will stab yourself with pride. Vain glory. That affinity for the applauds of men. And let me tell you something. God is speaking to us to warn us. I have seen people. I have watched people. I have watched them nurture the seed of pride. I have watched them nurture it carefully to grow. The first sign that pride, pride is at work in your life, is that submission becomes an embarrassment. To anybody, to anything, submission becomes an embarrassment. It's a sign that you're already dying from pride. Not just submission to a man of God, Submission to principles. Oh, everyone lift up your hands and you just stand and you are watching. Lift up your hands for what now? Eh? The seed of pride. Submission. Thank you. Very important. 
Galatians 5 26. We'll just look at two scriptures. I really want to challenge us on this because I have seen this thing kill people. Men, women, I've seen. And you know, the, the, the interesting thing about God is He gives you a measure of what He really intends giving you and watches your reaction. And many of us shock God and shock ourselves with pride and arrogance. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Vain glory. Vain glory. And a sign that the desire of vain glory is at work in you is that you begin to provoke people. You begin to envy. Vain glory. You see, there are two dimensions to pride I want us to pray against today. The first dimension is, we were discussing, I think, with Ejimi earlier on this morning, and he was just asking me a few questions, and we're really discussing, very interesting discussion. There are two dimensions to pride. The first is the one you organize for yourself. So, I can sit down right now, Apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God, and I find some of the leaders and some of the people, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, all the people, and I say, look, create a scenario that drums my impact before everybody. So it's arranged on purpose. Are we together now? That's the first dimension of pride. So whether it is by creating certain names or creating certain things, you, you create a system. And that's not honor. Because I seek to use people to establish my relevance as against their own relevance. Now, the second dimension of pride is where many of us are victims of and we don't know. You may not create the seed, but it is a desire you lost in your heart. And the day someone else creates it, you will jump at it. Hallelujah. You will jump at it. You may never ask anybody to open... <laughs> Look, listen to me, and learn and grow and walk in power. Someone may look at you and say, ah, um, you may never tell anybody to call you great man of God, but it's a desire in your heart. And the day somebody says, do you know you are such an awesome man? You say, what did you say? Can you repeat it again? He only stimulated something that has been there, waiting for occasion to find expression. Many of us think because we are not the ones arranging the scenario, it means we are free from pride. Sometimes humility is, it takes effort. You must reject certain, you must peg honor and say, no, this has come too far. It must remain here by yourself. I watch men of God on TV. Sadly, I don't criticize men of God, but I have watched people and I see like you pour cold water on a thirsty soul. That's how they drink pride. They drink it as members. It, you see, honor has a boundary. Once you cross that boundary, it no longer becomes honor. The character of pride is that you find fault in the glory of others. So, the character of pride is everybody must be down for you to be satisfied. If we are all lifted, you are not satisfied. Because the goal of pride is to attempt to show the excellency of your stature as against somebody. So, pride does not, um, is not satisfied when you are lifted. It checks if others are down. When they are down, then you are satisfied. Are you getting that now? So if we say, oh, thank you, Pastor Alpha, thank you, Ebenezer, thank you, Ejimi, Ebenezer gets angry and says, no, 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 no. If you had said, thank you, Pastor Alpha, um, but I'm disappointed in you, Ejimi, you didn't do well, but you are exceptional. He says, now you have honored me. Because you have honored me by contrasting others. That's the spirit of pride. So it wants to stand alone. There are men of God who have created all kinds of theologies in their ministry to downplay any once they see an offshoot of true grace they strangle it with teachings they threaten people with causes because there is insecurity locked up in them hallelujah are we together now vain glory a lost for the praise of men it's amazing how we look for it we beg for it. We organize programs for it. 
we organize sons and daughters for it. You see men of God running around. Can you make my birthday? I mean, make noise with it. So t-shirt, so ankara, and put everything. Just make sure everybody around knows. And we laugh. It's a dangerous thing. I always say this. Bless people and give them the option of appreciating you by themselves. They will surprise you. They will surprise you. I run away from pride. Ego. Like a cancer. There are men of God who do not see eyeball to eyeball. Because somebody was called Mr. By mistake. I remember, I think my people will bear me witness. We, went, we were in, um, I think it was Enugu. Towards the end of last year. And... I went to minister in a crusade there and it was a great meeting. People came around and there was a gentleman. I think he's a pastor. Pastor's son. So they introduced him mistakenly. They said, brother, so, so, so and so. I saw the way the guy moved, you know, with anger and insult to my grace. You don't know who I am. And he climbed up the stage and the first thing he said, look, my name is pastor, so, so, so. Not brother, so, so, so. And he challenged them to correct it. And then the next thing, he raised one song and said, I hope there are ushers here because the power of God will start moving. I just said, Ayah, my brother, you have done two mistakes. One, you have refused to recognize grace. Let me tell you, when you enter a place where there is a higher grace, if you don't, if you don't honor it, even your angelic activity will be seized. There is ranking in the spirit. That's why Jesus looked for John the Baptist. Who is the man with the mantle in the city? And when he submitted and acknowledged him, his own ministry opened up. I said, this boy is a very foolish boy. You came and you saw pastors all over. Pastors you would not see. You don't even know who they came to honor. You don't know why they are there. You see, some of us are cheated because we don't know how to take advantage of opportunities. God gives you a privilege to stand in the midst of people that you never would have had access to. And you blow it because of pride. God wants to announce your ministry and he gives you an opportunity to take offering in a church that on a good day you should not even be found in front. And you come up and say, I just want to let you know that my email address is uh, so, 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 and so, and so. And I don't attend to calls anyhow. In fact, the way the ministry is growing now, how many members? 20, 30, 45. There's a young man, I will not mention his name, in the body of Christ. He had contact to Benny Hinn. Very small boy. Benny him prophesied his birth. Many of you may know him. This little boy had unusual access. I saw the way Benny Hinn was lifting him because Benny Hinn took him like a son. Within weeks, his ministry exploded. And this guy will be arrogant on stage. Imagine sharing the stage with an authority like Benny Hinn. And one time I watched the guy. He was talking and he looked at Mike Mudok. He said, get a pen, get a pen, quickly. Get a pen and a book. And I was watching him. And he said, write this. It was an accurate prophecy. But when he wrote everything, I said, this guy's grace has died. He didn't reach one year. Have you not seen people rise up in the church? I'm not going to mention names, but you know. People rise up and it's like God just withdraws the grace. Pride. Pride is dangerous. Dangerous. And so that gentleman, he said, I hope they are ushers. Please, I want you to station yourself, move around because the spirit of prophecy is upon me. I, I sang one song, sang another. The people were angry, they were tired, they came with hunger. You know, imagine that kind of thing. They gave him time, he obviously overshot the time and then he started prophesying. Now everybody lift up your hands. Right now the power of God will move. People waited five minutes. It's always pride leads to destruction, embarrassment and so on and so forth. That guy did his best. He may have seen grace walk in his church and he did not know the protocol of maintaining it. God would have honored that guy in no small way if he allowed God to lift him. And the guy got up and made noise and was challenging the people because they always would look for an excuse. Moved around one lady, two ladies and he left with all kinds of disappointment back to his seat. Brothers and sisters, at the end of that meeting, this guy was shocked and he stood. Do you know it's painful when you make noise over something and it doesn't happen and somebody else comes and is so effortless. The more it happens, the more people say, can you see? This is what you would have been. Pride is dangerous. Is God speaking to us? 
The Bible says when you enter a place, sit at the back. It's a principle. When you enter a place, let your work speak for you. Don't speak for it. Proverbs 31, it says, let her work speak for her at the gate. You come around with one album and say, I'm, I'm, I'm an anointed, I'm a psalmist. I, my psalmist, if you just give me five minutes, I will, I will surprise you in this church. It's a sign that nobody is a testament of the transformation that has come from your grace. But when you allow God to lift you. Listen, Koinonia, I'm teaching you something. Run away from the quest for vain glory. Sometimes men will try to do it. Stop it! I was rebuking some of these, my young people that I help at, at times. I saw some of them and when I see them among their contemporaries, I see them standing. I say, you are already learning this nonsense. I remember someone here, he, he used to be here. I looked at him one day and I said, come and stand here. He came and I said, you are soon going to fall. I see pride eating you up like a cancer. And he looked at me. He said, me? I told him, I said, there are many things I don't claim to know. But there are certain things I know. I know when a man is about to fall. You see? There are some of you who will honor anybody above you. But when you are among your contemporaries, that's when the pride comes. You are forced to honor someone above you because of solidarity. But when you are among your contemporaries... Let the power of God begin to move in a meeting. And you see the way men of God, their body is itching for mic. Everybody wants to hold the mic. When the service is over, somebody comes to pick a mic and say, hold on, give me E. We are, we are not done. The, what God is doing here. All those things, we think there are signs of spiritual maturity. There are signs of childishness. Childishness. We went for a meeting in Yola. We are going to pray. It was a crusade in Yola. And I was ministering alongside God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche. I know that that's a great man. I've seen God honor me. But that's a father in the faith. God has lifted him. I will not sit down and begin to compare my ministry. It will be stupidity of the highest order. He's older than me. God has honored him. God has lifted him. He has become a model to the body of Christ. I know what many of us will do. You would try to make sure you snap with him and say, I've shared the stage with men like uh, so on and so forth and so forth. And you, you just sink yourself. You can ask the protocol. I remember his, his head of protocol was communicating with Victor. And he was excited about being, my being around. He had he heard about me. And he wanted, he wanted me to be there at the venue. Right? He was actually coming for his own crusade, Dr. Paul. And then... He, he was also to minister where I was ministering. It was a campus crusade. And this is what the protocol said. The night I went for the meeting there, the power of God was awesome. I mean, mighty things, miracles upon miracles. And I knew that the people respect me. They respect me so much. And if I came there together with Dr. Paul Enenche, they will want to honor Dr. Paul Enenche, but they will not want to dishonor me. So they may try to create the same platform. And I rejected. I said, I'm not going. I said, I'm not going for the meeting. You can ask the head of protocol. They said, no, no, no. I should come around. You'll be wonderful. I said, I am not going. I told them we're not going anywhere. Let the servant of God receive the honor due his sacrifice. We will come in the evening and finish the meeting. Many of you will not do that because you are looking for platform. One day I went somewhere and one guy just came and stood near me like a thief that we should snap. He's a pastor. I was just looking at him. Because he will use my picture and take it to his ministry and say we ministered with men like uh, this person, apostle was there and, and think that snapping the picture is an endorsement of his ignorance and carelessness. Humility entails that you consciously reject certain things. Not every open door was opened by God. You need to know if the timing is right to enter it. Hallelujah. Don't think because a door is open and you want to enter. No! Sometimes God can say, no, your level has not gotten to this. Although the door is open, stay quiet. Is God speaking to us? This happens in every area of life. That's why many of us will never rise. There are ladies here, you love God. But the day God gives you an opportunity, 
you'll be amazed at the pride and arrogance. And God is watching how you are disqualifying yourself and allowing this ancient stumbling block of pride to stop you from stepping into the next level. I fear pride. I run from it. Hallelujah. I, I can't remember where I was sharing this testimony about a woman who um, carried something, you know, load. And I saw her and I was in a hurry to help her carry the load. No matter how I'm lifted, I know that I'm not stupid. Not at all. Humility. Humility. There are many of you, if, if you were the ones who were privileged to stand where I'm standing, you see crowds of people inside and outside. There will be one PA to clean your left shoe. There will be another PA to clean your right shoe. Are we together? There is the one who, he will not just give you handkerchief, you will put your face like this and he will clean it. That's what kills men. Years ago, in your campus, years ago, many people who have been there long ago will tell you there were many pastors on campus. Ministry. I mean, somebody will have five members, three PAs, two ladies, one guy. I want to go on TV ministry. You see people holding books. I see their bankers. What are they doing? I am prophet this. I am apostle this. I am. I remember one pastor came and met me and said, man of God, is the, your grace. You need to go on air, go on radio. Many of those people, some are not even in ministry till now. Some are still roaming around, wondering what to do. God himself opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I was counseling a gentleman, maybe he's here with his mother, and the mother said something and the boy just shouted at her. Ah, my name is Joshua Selman. I turned to that boy and I landed it on him. I said, apologize to mama immediately. Otherwise, you have subtracted your years in life. The Bible says, he that dishonored his father, he said his, candles will be, his candle will be taken and will be left in obscurity. Honor. Humility. Hallelujah. Humility. Is God is my witness. It's just that the protocol and all these people will never allow me. I don't mind coming in the afternoon to clean the benches and do all the things I need to do. It doesn't change me. It doesn't change me. True confidence is not in things around. It's in who you are. If I clean a chair today, it does not make me less anointed. Listen, God is speaking to us. This is why some of us cannot be workers in the house of God. Because we think God has lifted me. And people are aware. That's the devil destroying you. There are ladies today who cannot quietly sweep the house of God. Because they feel kind. There is a man of God I met somewhere. He's a pastor and he said he likes me. And I'm already imagining myself as a mama. Let me tell you, I know the end of that relationship. Nonsense. Let me just tell you in advance. Because God is not a fool. He will not carry his servant that he has been laboring on. And then attach you to change his life. I hate pride. Our daddy is here almost every time. Prof, do you know that I'm even afraid? I always tell him that when I grow up, I want to be like him. A man that is so fulfilled and yet very humble. There are all kinds of distinguished people here. Day before yesterday, or was it, I, I introduced um, um, Madam Ladi, and she was even quarreling me. She was saying, why did I expose her? There are lots of other people, distinguished people scattered. But there are people who will come and stand outside and say, tell the protocol I'm around. Who are you? My name is Pastor, Pastor um, Goodwill, something. Uh, so what? I mean, you can imagine. I came all the way from Kaduna. Let them know that I'm around. And give you seat. The Lord told me, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. You know why some pastors will never have crowd? 
they can preach everything and criticize people who have pride. God knows. The moment they see crowd, the first thing in their mind is, how do I get lifted? If everybody gives me 10,000, 10, it's a lucrative business. If everybody does this and that, show me it. By the grace of God Almighty, I never treat people and say, do you know I'm a man of God? No, it is, it is, this ministry is a call to serve. It's a privilege. I'm not embarrassed about it. I will say it all the time. It's a privilege to serve God. I was crying before the Lord today and I said, Lord, it's a privilege to serve. Never replace me with a stone. Never replace me. God has power to replace any man. I teach the leaders all the time. When we go for leaders meeting, the first thing I tell them is, guys, thank you so much. People look at Koinonia and they are looking at me. But you are the brains behind some of these things that we do. Do you have the humility to acknowledge the impute of others to your success? Or do you make it look like they played a little role, but after I fasted and prayed? No. I learn from everyone. Everyone. And I treat people with dignity and humility. Ask the protocol how many times I've rebuked them just for telling people at the back, shift, 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 apostle is coming. And I tell them, never do that. Never do that. I know you need organization. You don't come and push people and say, apostle is coming. So what? This is all of me. How, how big am I that you're asking everybody to shift? Can't I pass? Some of us are already enjoying it. In our little fellowship. You say, when I'm coming, you are the one who announced my coming. You, you escort me. And I don't know where you are getting that mentorship from. It's most certainly not from me. I fear God and I've lived as transparent for you to see and learn. Many of us are learning nonsense. We just go to any meeting and we are watching. Out of all that God is doing, we are watching how ah, they gave the woman. Somebody came and just said, oh man of God. And you admire it. And in your mind, you are hoping... In your own small fellowship too. People now come and say you are standing. Kneel down. Kneel down. We are going to pray. Pride is a chiller. I've seen people who, do you know there are people seated here. I know them. They are millionaires. But you see them keep quiet. You can match them and they won't say anything. But they are wealthy people. But there are others with nothing but noise. Yet it will make all kinds of noise. Let me tell you, great people have a track record of humility. That's why they became great. You may see certain people. There are great men and women of God. There are people. When I was coming in, I saw people. I was going to say, ah, this person is here. Great people just scattered inside and outside. But there are others. I am Pastor this. I am Mrs. this. Please, we are going to pray. Brothers and sisters, I know this. In my little life, pride is a killer. Some of us cannot greet elderly people again. You see some of these are mothers and you just push them around. And bring a curse upon yourself and your ministry. Never listen to learn from anything. Oh, I think you should. I know. I know. I know. We are fumbling. I know. When learning becomes an embarrassment to you, pride is eating you up. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne. Listen, the antidote to pride is a public acknowledgement of the value and the impute of others. You don't tear down the achievement of others to prove you are great. That's why you will never hear me open my mouth and mention the name of a man of God or a church or a ministry and castigate them. 
God is not just a God of koinonia. There are many other men of God doing great things. And when people start saying, Apostle, you are the only one, I say, be silent. I know that's the voice of pride. That's the voice of a killer on his way to destroy me. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, let it die. Let it die. That affinity for the praise of men. Pray, pray. That affinity for the praise of men on the strength of my accomplishment. On the strength of my accomplishment. Oh God, I lay it down. I lay it down. I lay it down. I lay it down. Pray, pray. That spirit of pride, that affinity for the praise of men, the praise of men, the praise of men, the praise of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of one of the indices that to measure true humility is how much you acknowledge the impute of God in your success. Are we together? Because chances are that the truth is you have you, you kept certain principles to get that result. So that people can look at you and say, Kai, no, 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 no. Pastor Alpha, at this level, you are already almost becoming a doctor and then a professor. Oh, you are doing this. I mean, you can imagine. And all of that is up to you to suddenly change to an usher and say, there is one as you see me. That's why, you see, when I go for meetings and the power of God is blessing people, there are all kinds of reactions. There are those putting their hands on their head. What kind of man is this? And I'm quick to tell them, no. What you see, this is a puppet. There is one behind me. There is one who is responsible. I don't say it indirectly. I say it directly. Make no mistake. There is one who can give and take the grace upon my life. I am absolutely nothing. Koinonia is absolutely nothing. Thank God for the clap for Joshua Selman. But I am telling you now that this man you are seeing is nothing without the grace and the wisdom of God. I am not embarrassed. I remember where God took me from. From sitting in a gutter to study my Bible and see what God has done. After many years, I've still refused to be a fool. I know that when you acknowledge God, He will lift you. I'd like you to say, Lord, in all my ways, I will acknowledge you. Lift your voice and pray. In all my ways, in all my accomplishments, in all my achievements, pray. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. When men try to blow the trumpet of me, I direct it to you. In all my ways, I acknowledge you. I will let men see how helpless I am outside of you. Those outside, are you praying? Lekoto kotobesh e prakatalaba manta parokotos rekete tete leba ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. You get to a point in your life. Two more prayer points and we're done. This prayer point is strategic. Because in the next two minutes, I want you to list everything in your life that looks like a trophy. And say, Lord, it's because of you. If I've never said it, I'm saying it now. Lift your voice. If I have a degree, it's because of you. If I have a PhD, it's because of you. If I'm married, it's because of you. If I'm alive, it's because of you. If I am wealthy, it's because of you. Lift your voice, Koinonia. Acknowledge him. Because of you, you are my wisdom. 
You are my wisdom. You are my wisdom. You are my wisdom. The force behind this ministry. Lord, we acknowledge you. Lord, I acknowledge you.
to be deceived by the accolades of men. I receive grace to reject the praises of men. To put a limit to the praises of men. That I may reveal Christ in my success. That I may reveal Christ in my lifting. That I may reveal Christ in my greatness. Listen, the purpose of your honor is to reveal Christ. The purpose of the miracles is to reveal Christ. If Christ is not revealed in your activities, you are arrogant. Never trivialize the impute of Jesus Christ and say, well, I thank God for the grace of God, but I labor. Stay there and let men know is the reason. I made up my mind that every time people clap to me, I say, you are clapping for the wrong person. I'm telling you this and I say it with all my heart. That's why you don't see people say, oh God of Joshua Selman, what, what do, how, how many things can I do? Who can I help? I'm, I'm not against people who there is a place for that. But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we are too young to begin to allow this foolishness destroy us. I'm telling you this. I speak to us specifically, the young people. We are too young to allow the foolishness of the praises of men destroy us. We are to, I can clap for daddy. We can clap for our mothers. They have earned the right through time. But a small boy just moving and people begin to blow your head is a way of death. We are too young. We have read revivals. We have read history, Bible history, and seen how pride destroyed men. It was Alexander the way that got to a point where he claimed he was Elijah. That's what pride can do to men. Please, from tonight, hear me, pastors, business people, I'd like you to make up your mind. If there are a circle of singers and messengers that keep clapping and blowing your head, go back and tell them it's dissolved in Jesus' name. I love you. I thank you for honoring me. I receive the honor, but let's bring it down to the limit of my level. This honor is too much for the level. I've not yet gone far. You must have the grace to tell them. They'll say, no, 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 no. Daddy, you need more. Tell them, look, if you call me father, then honor me by doing what I'm telling you. Keep it that way. There was a time I stopped the protocol because there were two protocol people carried, coming to, to take me. I said, this is nonsense. Please, I'm not ready. A particular PA of a notable man of God in this country one time, a military man, when he came for Koinonia, he was surprised. He saw what God was doing. And he said, man of God, you should not allow people to access you anyhow. I mean, this is terrible. The, the grace, they are abusing the grace. They don't sow into your life. They push you around. People come and I, I was hearing a sincere man, but I was hearing the counsel of Achitophel. Sincere man. The last time I heard about that man, physically speaking, he was doing well. But spiritually, he had died. Sleeping around, doing all kinds of things. That was the person who was advising me. Be careful whose advice you take. As you sit down discussing ministry, young people, hear me. As you sit down discussing life, and God begins to bless you, one million, two million, five million, it blows up your head. No. You must maintain a life of modesty and be temperate in all things. There is honor and stability when a man is humble. It's difficult to accuse a humble man. Pride, pride sponsors accusation. When people say things against you, your humility can bail you out. Hallelujah. Please lift up your request and let's prophesy upon it. If you have it, if you don't have, that's all right. For those of you who are just coming, the Lord gave us an instruction. And the instruction is that throughout this fasting period, you write two sets of lists. You've been hearing the amazing testimonies. The first list is a list of your expectations. You are holding on to the horns of the altar and praying. And say, Lord, this is what I want to see happen on the positive. The second part of the list represents your challenges. The things that have mocked God in your life. You write it. 
And he said, these Egyptians that you see, you will see no more forever. And the Lord said, every day I should keep speaking, speaking over it. And on Friday, prophetically, we are going to set the list of those challenges on fire. While he's burning, we are going to lift up high praise. The healer. That praise that brought Jericho down. Please don't miss Friday. Friday is like a miracle service plus. Invite everybody, including your enemy. We are going to burn these things. While it is burning, not before. We are going to sing and jump before the God of heaven. It's called the healer. It's a mystery. And let's see the devil that will tie your destiny and keep you there. Please remember that every day we are breaking with communion. We are breaking with communion. If you do not take my blood and my, my flesh and my blood, you have no part in me. It's very important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please lift it up to the God of heaven as we pray. Ezekiah lifted the threat. The threat and said, oh God, bow down your ears. Bow down your eyes and see this threat. Father, you have instructed us and we are obedient. I'm praying in the name that is above all names. Once again, every challenge, every altar. Listen, I was speaking to a lady this, this afternoon and her, her issue challenged me. Brothers and sisters, there are altars that sponsor some of these pains. We are going to judge it tonight. Lift, lift up your hand. In the name that is above all names, every altar sponsored by the gates of hell that keep these challenges to be repeated in our lives, it catches fire tonight in the name of Jesus. It catches fire tonight. Shekapakata. It catches fire tonight in the name of Jesus. Every spirit entity, every human entity responsible for your pain, responsible for your setback, responsible for your weakness, responsible for your delay, your joblessness, in the name that is above all names, we command the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment, the sword of judgment. Hallelujah. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused that Israel will not go. There was a time he said, You can go, but leave your wives and your children. I like you. There's no negotiation in this fasting time. I can't go. My health cannot go and leave my finances behind. My, my finances cannot go and leave my marriage behind. In the name that is above all names, every power, I say it again, holding your marriage, your destiny, your business, in the name of Jesus, I set it on fire now. 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 It fire now. Hallelujah. Every spirit that has tied down the joy of your family so that there is only sounds of mourning. There are families that never rejoice. They are crying all the time. I pray for you. Let the voice of the accuser be silenced by the blood. Be silenced by the blood. Be silenced by the blood. Hallelujah. The Bible says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To put an end to it. Hallelujah. Everything on your list that you are trusting God for, that must happen. We are praying. There is an energy. There is an ability of the Holy Spirit that makes it happen. No matter how impossible it is. Oh God that answers prayer. I pray that this, this request will be turned into testimonies now. Turned into testimonies now. Turned into testimonies now. Hallelujah. Turned into testimonies. I pray for you. Finally on that list. Tonight, 
night as you sleep as a token of victory i pray may god give you strange dreams and visions tonight as a token of victory i activate your spirit man to receive signals visions dreams see your victory in your dreams see your victory in visions see your victory in your dreams hallelujah listen you will have strange dreams tonight you will see yourself receiving things as it happens in your dream it must appear in the physical as it happens in the spirit it must appear in the physical hallelujah there was one of our mothers here the boy is doing architecture now the boy came stubborn he smokes everything drinks everything the woman was tired of him and she kept coming with her heart open one day the fire of god fell upon that boy's head let me tell you when god locates you no no devil no devil hallelujah you've once had the story of promise promise remember his story he shared it here he came to zaria with dreadlocks dreadlocks lots but money dreadlocks and earrings that's when he came to zaria but when the fire fell see what the fire can do the fire can change anybody let me tell you something please add the list of your unsaved loved ones if you have not done so don't say god cannot change them who told you saul was on his way to damascus fire fell on him i like you to pray and say lord anyone in my family who is not saved may fire fall on them this night lift your voice and pray one minute my father must be saved my mother must be saved an encounter an encounter an encounter an encounter give them dreams let them see jesus visions of heaven visions of hell give them encounters pray for your brother pray for your sisters we snatch them from the hands of alcohol pornography immorality we snatch them from the gates of hell in the name of jesus we snatch them we release the convicting power of the holy ghost pray for your father pray for your mother hallelujah revelations 5 verse 12 we're rounding up please as you go back listen let's use this fasting period to pray for our loved ones don't complain about them there is a spirit making them behave the way they are behaving stop attacking individuals challenge those spirits wake up in the night don't just know your way this is a period of spiritual awakening one o'clock two o'clock lake baratada knock the gates of heaven lord i i take this stubborn lady i bring her before the altar and let the fire fall on them don't sit down and be discussing and say you see you need to stop following men that's not the way out solve the problem there are spirits that manipulate the destinies of men Revelations 5 verse 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive what power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor the Bible says by humility are riches and honor I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ because of the spirit of humility upon you may the god that i serve lift you ay, 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 ay. where men have laughed at you and buried your case like lazarus we call that case out and we say it's the season of exaltation 
everything dying in your life, I speak to it. In this year of multiplied grace and influence, rise to a new level. Rise to a new dimension. Prophetically, rise to a new dimension. Spiritually, rise to a new dimension. Financially, rise to a new dimension. Hallelujah. Please sit down for one minute and have the prophetic focus for tomorrow. It gets hotter by the day and I'm encouraging us, please, from tomorrow Wednesday down till Friday, please don't miss the meetings again because it's going to be prophetic. We have been establishing principles. Now, from tomorrow, we are going to be confronting things, controlling spirits, territorial powers. Are we together? We are not just teaching principles again. It's rising hotter because there are entities who are alive and can hear us. We need to force them to give way for the opening of our destiny. So, please, please, if you can invite your family members, no, even if they are stubborn, just leave them. They can be playing around. Just leave them there. When the fire falls, and that spirit that is responsible leads them. They will step into a new dimension. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, the prophetic focus, we are going to be praying. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. There is no man that can rise to any way of worth without a connection to another man. The breakthrough of every man is in the hands of another man. The employment of everybody is in the hands of somebody. Every billion that will come to your account is in somebody's account already. It won't fall from heaven. But there is a mystery that connects men. Write these two scriptures. We have to pray. Please, I'd like you to pay attention tomorrow. By God's grace, we will give more time. Please, those conducting, when you come, do everything you have to do fast. So that we can have the prayer session and i want us to really stretch and pray because you need a man introduced in your life this week there is somebody that must appear to wipe your tears somebody shared with me a testimony today it is something i can't share here many of you will not even believe it a breakthrough god just brought somebody and just connected him i'm talking of multi millions just came like rain for doing nothing that's what the same way a wicked man can come into your life and not just subtract, divide your life into two. The lady was behaving well until a stupid boy came into her life and divided her life. A gentleman was doing well until a very bad girl came into his life. Satan uses men to destroy men. God uses men to build men. Are we together? Tomorrow we are going to also be seeing the prophetic implication of association. Please listen. That you are not a true Christian if it does not affect your association. Don't say I'm the only one. The rest are drinking, but I'm not taking it. No. If you are a child of God, your atmosphere matters in your life. Please don't miss it. There are people who must hear this message. Second Samuel. Second Samuel. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Second Samuel 9. Verse 1 to 11. You read there the story of Mephibosheth. Mark chapter 2. Those who will be leading it will expound on it. Mark chapter 2. Verse 1 to 12. Second Samuel 9. Verse 1 to 11. Please, we give this prophetic focus so that you can pray. Right? You pray. So beginning from tonight... When you go back, you begin to pray, Lord, who are the men that must appear in my life? As a sister, you pray, not just husband. Who are the people who must show up in my life? There are some of us who have seen patterns in our lives. The moment God is about to lift you, certain people show up. They call you. Former relationships. How are you now? Can you come to judge you? Are we together? And strange things happen. And if God grants us grace, either tomorrow or next, we will consider unwanted partners, wicked spirits that visit us 
We are not just talking of destiny helpers like just people coming. There are destiny killers and we need to identify them and deal with them. There are many people, when God is about to lift you, a strange man who claims he knows you, comes to you in the dream, sleeps with you or does all kinds of things and you get up somebody who was going to bless you will say i've changed my mind they told you it does not matter see what is happening in your life we are going to deal with it in the name of jesus by the grace of god we believe the full gospel in koinonia we will deal with everything that should be dealt with many ladies are under the trap of this thing i'm telling you it's just that we are not sincere in church so everybody will just claim, they just say, just act as if nothing is happening. Something is happening and there is a mystery to it. Hallelujah. Someone will ask you out, about to marry you, say, let's go and see your parents. That strange man comes in and say, you are playing with me. You wake up in the morning and the brother says, I don't know what happened, but something is convicting me that you are a wicked lady. I don't want you. Whereas you are a kind, beautiful, nice worker in the house of God. It's not just about saying, God, give me this, give me that. There are spirits, strangers, that come to connect us. This is the mystery of things like fibroid. This, this demonic growth all over the bodies of people. And if there is anybody here having anything planted in you, I'm prophesying it before we close. Anything that is planted in your body that did not come from God, in the name of Jesus Christ, like Dagon fell before the ark, it must flush out of your body tonight. I'm saying it again, it must flush out of your body tonight. Every stranger who has planted any growth lump on your breast, whatever it is around your body, I just felt like doing this before we leave. And in the name of Jesus, I'm saying it, any growth around any part of your body, from your head to your toe, sponsored by any wicked stranger. We judge it tonight in the name of Jesus. Use this fasting period to fight everything that is not of God. Don't say it's not paining me. It must go. It must go. Because it may not pain you now until it starts growing and they will tell you it's cancer. Nip it and kill it there. And it must die. Hallelujah. It says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffered violence. It advances forcefully. And only forceful men advance it. So please don't tolerate anything. Anything that mocks you, take it to the least. Anything that mocks you, take it to the... My eye, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling pain. Take it there. Don't sit down and say, it's alright. It happens every dry season. Take it there. It must be dealt with. Hallelujah. Yes. Ladies, please take it seriously. Don't say, oh my own, it's something I'm used to. I grew up with it like that. Please write it and say, God, this is not normal. I've been keeping quiet about it, but now I won't be silent with it again. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, I'd like us to listen to two messages, please. Activating breakthroughs. The ministry of destiny help us. No matter how many times you've listened to it, please. I'm going to listen to it this night, almost right away when I go back. Please listen to it. I teach there on the ministry of destiny help us. And that's going to be our emphasis. Please fast. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Uh, the children can fast maybe till afternoon and then you stop. If you are pregnant or you are... Give God praise. In the name of Jesus, we know there is more than this. We ask you to help us tonight by the power that is in the name of Jesus. We are the desperate people. We want
tonight is a prayer meeting psalms 80 verse 18 to prepare our spirit the presence of god is strong in this place there is grace to pray psalms 80 verse 18 let's read it together one to read so we will not go back from thee quicken us and we will call upon your name you don't just pray because you want to pray there is a grace it's called the spirit of prayer and supplication hallelujah before we start tonight we're going to be crying that quickening you will pray mechanically until that quickening comes are we together so for the next few minutes i want you to blast in tongues and shake every unbelief in your spirit please be serious be serious be serious go ahead and pray we can also go and call upon your name. Inside, outside, those following on my go ahead and pray, pray. We can also go. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Charge your spirit man. Charge your spirit man. Shekata 
Contend for the spirit of prayer and supplication. Shakata barakata prekete berede kashi prekete barada bata. Anta kratos koto preskete prekashi kata barada ta. Shakaria kata preskete baria ta koso to presh. Impra koto skomanti kashi kare kato skopia ta. Shakete prekete koso to prekete balada ba. Impra kata kame ta koso to prekete me kame me kame balada ba kashi prata kati kapar shikete. Shikoto sapati anda kata pres kata. Maraka tapa kaka nte debo koso prege deba, prende koso to prege deba la daba la daba. Shaka ta prege ti bara daba la daba kasa ta prege ke te ba shi bara tata. Shaka ta prege ke bara ta su prege ti bara daba la daba. In prege ta po koso to prege to bala daba. Prege ta koso to paria ka ta ba ka ta prege de bala de bos. Quicken us, quicken us, quicken us, oh God. Quicken us, oh God. The flesh may be weak, but the spirit is willing. Shaka takra taka seka tapra kata balada ba. Manda prate kasi garika tosi aba. We want to make contact with spiritual realities tonight. Shem takra taka seka tapra kata balada ba ra ba ra 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 ba tasi. Imbra kata pras kata pras sika tapa prake de bela de boko sopra da kata manda pas kata pras kari kato sopra ge di bara sika ta embri kato sopra ge te bara da ho sika ta. Sika te prake te bara da bala da bala. seriously tonight I want to teach you a mystery on how to command the attention of heaven I want you to pay attention there is a secret to answered prayer please listen give us James please James 4 we'll read from verse 1 to 3 Cain and Abel offered sacrifices but the sacrifice of Cain was rejected and the sacrifice of Abel rose up to the heavens and the Bible says God had respect for the sacrifice of Abel and Cain was angry and God said if you do it correctly if you do correctly there is a pattern James 4 verse 1 we are reading down to 3 from whence cometh war and fightings among you Come they not hence even from the lost that war in your members. Verse 2. Ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. And ye cannot obtain. Ye fight and war. Now read the remaining part. One to read. Yet ye have not. Because ye ask not. Verse 3. Ye ask. 
and ye receive not why because ye ask amiss now listen the word amiss here is out of pattern out of pattern you are asking you are praying but there is a formula there is a path that leads the request of a man to the throne of heaven and this is what i want to show you let me tell you your prayer life will be remarkably blessed there is a way you pray that brings answers there is a way you pray that will command the attention of heaven if you don't know this you can pray and feel spiritual and spit saliva from morning till night and not get any results the prayer meetings in many ministries are poorly attended by because those who lead the prayers do not know what they are doing there is an art of war it says with wise counsel make war i want to show you four keys four mysteries in the spirit that have helped my prayer life i tell you you will command results you will command the attention of heaven if you learn this mystery are we together don't let anyone fool you that god answers every prayer no no hagar prayed her son cried both of them were talking to god only the prayer of ishmael got to heaven the bible says and god had the cry of the young lad he did not hear the lamentation of hagar are we together another fact you must realize is that your tears touches god but it does not move god uh -uh. the bible says for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched not moved with the feelings of our infirmities he is touched he sympathizes with us but if god is to take any action on your behalf it must be according to his pattern because he has exalted his word even above his name are we together pray one minute violently open my eyes as these mysteries come oh god may they not just be informations may they be spirit and life spirit and life pray pray by your mercy oh god open our eyes Shapakata prescata brandega subrata. Pray. Shikete braska barada bakabiyata ba. We are praying already. Holy, holy, holy. Shikete. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty? Is the Lord God Almighty? My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. This house is full of your glory. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. Your people say, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord, is the Lord God Almighty, is the Lord God Almighty. My life is true, my life is full of your glory. My life is full. Hallelujah. Listen. Please open up your spirit to these four keys that I will be sharing with you. The first key 
that governs the mystery of answered prayer is that before your prayer touches the throne room it must be heartfelt the first key to the kind of prayer and petition that will move heaven is the prayer that moves you first are we together let me assure you that god is not playing games with men if your prayer cannot move you it will not move heaven are we together the bible says james chapter 5 please give us verse 15 if you can give us from amplified james 5 16 we have to really be fast there's a lot of prayer tonight there's a lot of prayer james 5 16 16 16 i like us to read it says confess to one another therefore your faults your slips and false steps and so on and so forth and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored i want us to read the b part from the ns ready one to read the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man does what makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working the bible was teaching us how to pray the kind of prayer that will touch heaven and is in the character of scripture to use a figure that typifies God's idea of prayer. Then he says, Elijah in this example was a man of like passion and the Bible says he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years. Elijah shut the heavens and put the key in his pocket. He said, there shall be no rain except at my word and then the bible says when it was time for the rain to fall right elijah began to pray he prayed the first time putting his head beneath his knees and he cried and traveled let me tell you the kind of prayer that touches heaven is the kind of prayer where you pray and forget who is by your side you're not looking at makeup or suits or conscious of whether i'm sweating no 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 it must be heartfelt from the depth of your spirit are we together hannah kept crying every time at shiloh but a time came she prayed a heartfelt prayer the bible says before the altar she poured her soul to a point that eli the prophet said why is this woman drunk how can you come to the altar drunk and he said my lord i am not drunk but a woman that is pouring her soul before god and the spirit of god spoke through the prophet let me tell you something the kind of prayer that shakes heaven is prayer that is heartfelt the way a lot of believers pray you will know that you do not expect an answer are we together yeah you pray with all your heart the bible says jesus prayed at gethsemane it was so heartfelt his sweat was like drops of blood same prayer without changing it three times and he sustained strength from heaven and was ready for the cross are we together are you ready to pray as i mentioned the king will pray and at the end of the fourth year i'll give us some prayer requests and we'll pray heartfelt prayer heartfelt prayer when we say pray you see a lot of people strolling around chewing gums huh you see that kind of prayer let me tell you something i'm not being religious with you there is a law you are contending against forces it's like an aeroplane attempting to ride it must move and the law of aerodynamics must sustain capacity to overcome the law of gravity the flesh has its encumbrances and the moment you begin to pray the flesh will exert a weight upon you but it takes power everybody say power as you generate power in the spirit it's like a flight your flesh is weak you are feeling sleepy but you understand the law of spiritual superiority that as it is in the spirit so it will manifest your spirit is strong but the bible says the flesh is weak it's up to you to yield to the weakness of the flesh and not pray or keep praying you don't receive strength to continue praying it is in the prayer all of a sudden when your flesh is weak have you prayed to a point that you did not even expect you had strength for 10 minutes keep praying as you keep praying, you are weak the 
the devil keeps sending all kinds of thoughts in your mind just keep praying the secret is to continue i tell you there is an escape velocity in the spirit there is a level you will get to that it will no longer be your flesh at that level the spirit of god takes over lift your voice and pray blast in tongues a heartfelt prayer walk around don't just sit at your seat scrolling carelessly oh we are ascending we are ascending we are ascending in the realm of the spirit above and beyond the realm of the limitations of the flesh I assure you your spirit is willing. I assure you your spirit man is willing. Your spirit man is willing. Your spirit man is willing. Forget about the limitation of the flesh. With time it will bow. With time it must bow. There is a supply of grace and spirit power upon you. Grace to travel. Make it a the heartfelt, effectual, heartfelt, effectual, heartfelt, effectual, heartfelt, effectual, heartfelt, effectual. Generate power, power, generate power to dislodge every force, generate power to contend with every altar, generate power to confront death, generate power to confront God. Generate power to force answers. I worship you with all my heart. With all my heart. I worship you. With all my heart, with all my heart, Lord, I worship you with all my heart, with all my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I want to teach you the legal dimension of prayer. Are we together? There is, there is a judicial dimension of prayer. It's the law that governs petitions. Are we together? There is a name that God is called. And prayer activates the operation of that dimension. He's called the judge. Are we together? I want to teach you the legal dimension of prayer. The key to effective prayer, the kind of petition and supplication that will touch heaven is the kind that must be done in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the access code to the throne room. The access code, the mystery that opens the gates of the throne room is the name of Jesus. John 14, quickly please. John 14 verse 13. The name of Jesus is the access code. There is no other name that can open the heavens. It says, and I, give us in, in um, um, King James, King James please. It says, and whatsoever 
ye shall ask in your name in the name of a ministry it says whatsoever ye shall ask for as long as you do it in my name it says that will i do i will supervise see to it that because my name is upon it i will make sure it is answered that the father may be glorified whatsoever you ask in my name chapter 16 verse 23 same john 16 verse 23 go ahead and read it is projected inside and outside one to read and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily i say unto you aha uh -huh, whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it you the name of jesus is the access code are we together the attention of the father is only attracted when any man stepping in the name standing in the office and upon the strength of that which christ has done the name of jesus a representation of his finished work and his legal standing before god is the same basis we have the bible says let us therefore come before him boldly access the throne of grace boldly not in our righteousness not based on our goodness are we together but we stand upon the name the name of jesus is a representation of all that christ did the name of jesus reminds the father of the revelation of what jesus did which is a revelation of his love for man listen you will never get anything from god based on your self-righteousness it's got to be the law of petition is that you must stand in the righteousness of christ to be heard because the bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags so we come in his name not based on our qualification are we together we are going to pray and say father i make these petitions tonight as touching your righteousness as touching your love as touching your willingness to answer me lift your voice and pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the name of Jesus. Shaka paroko sobre ke nebe nebe nebe. Shaka paroko sobre ke nebe nebe Oh, it's in the name of Jesus that we come tonight. Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that we come tonight. Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that we come tonight. It's not in the name of a man. It's not in the name of an idol. Shabakata parada bakata, shakata prekata le pakorote. Shabarata kata parada. It's in the name of Jesus. Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Shabakos. Jesus, something special, supernatural about your name. hallelujah number three listen if you must pray the kind of prayer that heaven will respond to then that prayer must be in accordance to the will of god now don't play with this this is where i believe a lot of people get cheated in the ministry of prayer 
Their prayer may be heartfelt. Their prayer may be in the name of Jesus. But it's often not in accordance to the will of God. Listen. When you begin to make petitions in the realm of the spirit. Imagine yourself standing in a law court. Give us Isaiah 41 verse 21. Listen to what the prophet teaches us about prayer. Isaiah 41 verse 21 please. Everyone please read. One to go. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Why should the door be open to you? Bring forth your strong reason. The prayer of lamentation only gives you a psychological consolation. But I assure you it will not touch heaven. Every challenge in your life is the accuser's voice over your destiny. And if you are to speak, you are standing before that court of justice. Your petition, on what ground should I be blessed? Father, your word says, if I am willing and obedient, I will eat the good of the land. Lord, I am willing and have been obedient to your principles. Therefore, I deserve to eat the good of the land. I place a demand on the strength of this reality. That's how to pray. You don't pray emotional prayer. You don't stand on stage and speak opinions and talk nonsense. The only thing that challenges the voice of the accuser is the word of God, which is a testament of his will. Show me why God must give you a child. Show me why God must give you a child. Are we together? Show me why God must give you a job. Show me why God must give you a husband. Because I'm beautiful. It's not in the Bible. Are we together? It's in your brain. But it's not in the Bible. Show me why witchcraft must stop attacking my family. Bring forth your strong reasons. Let me show you one more scripture. I found this today and it blessed me. Isaiah 43 verse 26. Learn this. I'm teaching you the, the legal dimension of prayer. Isaiah 43 verse 26. Please read. One to read. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou on the strength of what we have discussed that ye may be justified. It's your Bible. The word put me in remembrance does not mean I have forgotten. Give me a basis to respond upon your life. Like you tell a judge in the constitution subsection this, it says this and that, and the judge says this is true. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. I'm a judge who is there to protect you, but give me the basis so that I can make that decree. We pray a lot of careless prayer, prayer that is not word based. If you are a pastor here, don't allow anybody to climb your mic and teach nonsense and teach opinions. It must be on the basis of the word. If we are praying for Nigeria, what is the basis? Just because we want to intercede. It's rubbish. It looks spiritual, but it will not be answered. You see the difference between a shrine, a herbalist, and a Christian who prays. Are we together? Please take seriously. It looks like a little secret, but it's a powerful one. When you find it, something that is a basis, you can hold on to it. When you read Isaiah 38, the Bible talks about a man called Ezekiel. I mean Hezekiah. And the Bible says, Prophet Isaiah came and told Hezekiah, Pack up your things. You will not recover from this sickness. You will die. Ah, ah. But Ezekiah knew that if you fund the project of the building of the Lord's house, the devourer should be far from you. You should live long. Ezekiah turned his face to the wall and began to plead on the strength of his sacrifice to heaven. Have you read in your Bible the basis upon which the baptism of the Gentiles happened in the house of a man called Cornelius. He said, Cornelius, there is a reason why I'm visiting your house. Your giving, your arms, and your prayer 
you have supported the cause of the kingdom there was a woman who died in the bible called Dorcas. when she died there was a basis to bring her back to life the widow said look she sold clothes for us and and, and i don't know was it paul or, or, or peter now peter had to say no 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 there is a basis for this woman to return back i want to ask you a question why do you think you should not suffer in 2016 because i'm a christian you are joking they are a kind of people that the bible says he reproves kings for them are you part of it before you claim a blessing find out whether you qualify for the conditions the bible does not talk to everybody in the bible demons spoke donkey spoke where is your rema where is the word that you will use as your basis are we together when they stopped daniel from praying the scripture pastor alpha shared listen when solomon dedicated the temple part of the covenant he entered with god was that anyone who turned to the jerusalem temple let that be a basis lord remember the seeds that were used to build this temple this temple remains an altar representing the sacrifice of men so whoever turns to it remember men sowed their things to raise this as a memorial and when they wanted to destroy daniel if daniel prayed closing his womb he would have died for nothing he opened the window onto Jerusalem and he started praying. And when they caught him, God said, Will I now violate my word? And he sent an angel to protect them. Are we together? Don't pray serious prayer until you gather the spiritual arsenals that are responsible. You've been burying. You don't just stand up and say, I, I, Lord, I want a child. What is all this nonsense? That's not prayer. It's called grumbling and complaining. It's called murmuring. Read Hebrews 2, 3, 4 and see what happened to people who murmured. The earth opened and swallowed them. What is the basis? Lord, I want my church to grow just because you think you're a Nigerian. There must be a basis. Many Christians don't read their Bibles. They don't study the word. They don't know the provision that is made for them. Many preachers read the Bible just to preach. They read the part that is responsible for their sermon. You must be well equipped with the word. When Satan struck, Jesus said, it is written. This is the basis. This is the basis. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word And Satan said is true. You have been attacking without scriptures. You have been attacking emotionally. Satan, get thee behind me. And you ask, why? He says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. The gates replied, who is this king of glory? Why should I open up? And they said, the Lord, strong and mighty. You must pray according to the word. Let me give us the last key. The Bible says to always wrap up your prayer with thanksgiving. A very simple but powerful mystery. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 to 7. It says be anxious for nothing. Right? Be anxious for nothing. But in everything it says by prayer and supplication then with it, thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Make your request known. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, as you pray, not by complaining, make your request with thanksgiving. When Jesus lifted five loaves and two fish, he didn't say, Lord, are you watching your name go down the drain? The Bible says he gave thanks. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Confidence. This is the confidence we have. The moment we ask anything in his name, he will do it. So you say, Lord, I thank you because I know that this is done. I thank you.
thank you because I know this is done. And let me tell you, you want to take it to another dimension, you can pray a prayer that is just full of thanksgiving. No complaint. Lord Jesus, I thank you. The Bible says, for with joy shall you draw out of the wells. There are dimensions that salvation brings, but joy is the key. Joy is the key. That's why depression is associated with failure. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Are we together? We are going to pray. We are going to pray. Use the, the next two minutes to travel seriously. Please, I am pleading with you. Be serious. Be serious. Be serious. Don't, don't. When I say be serious, I don't mean stand up or sit down. That's not, or, or shout or lie down. That's not what I'm saying. Put your heart in this thing. That's why we never give you a prayer request here without giving you a scriptural backing. That's the difference between herbal, herbal witchcraft and herbal solution and a scriptural solution. Are we together? You make petitions not according to your pain. Oh God, I've been crying till now. And God says, no, there is a system. Please hear me. Cain and Abel were brothers. They both offered sacrifices. One was accepted, one was rejected. That you are in a great house like this is no guarantee. I feel like giving you one more key. Let me share with you one more key. One mystery, listen. One mystery of answered prayer, listen please, is praying with the consciousness of the covenant that governs the spiritual house, the spiritual tribe, and the man of God who supplies grace and faith for you. Now listen, this is very powerful. You can make petitions on the strength of the covenant God has with a man. Are we together? This is the revelation of the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. What is it about them? There was a covenant. That was why God had the prayer of Ishmael. Although Ishmael was a son that came by mistake. That was not God's business. There was still a covenant connection. And when Ishmael cried, God had Abraham. And remember the covenant are we together you can make petitions in heaven on the strength of access that has come when listen listen the move of God on earth is through covenants God finds a man that represents his program for a season and enters a covenant with that man and whoever associates with that man is open to that dimension God had a covenant with that man with so you can access open heavens on the strength of the personal covenant that God had with a man or God had with a house. That was Daniel's secret. There was a covenant that God had with the temple in Jerusalem. Elijah had a covenant with God. And when Elijah knew his personal faith could not get this, he said, where is the Lord God? of Elijah. Lord, I approach this thing, not just on my personal faith. I come based on the personal covenant that you have. It's not witchcraft. It can be exaggerated but when it is understood, you will receive tremendous results. There are people riding on the wings of the tears of people. Are we together? When the devil afflicted Papa Oyedeko's wife, Demons he was casting out of some people refused to leave his wife. He prayed on the strength of his secret place as an apostle and a prophet of God. And that situation seemed to defy him. And then they went to Papa Adeboye, his spiritual father. And Adeboye said, Lord, I have a covenant with you that I will not bury any of my children. Remember that covenant. That devil gave way at once. He gave way. Listen, there are altars that can speak for men. It's a provision in the kingdom to give you easy breakthrough. Are we together? If you do not understand this, you will die like a chicken. Not every result is on the basis of your personal faith. You can invoke covenants. And God is a God that is a covenant-keeping God. There are men and women on earth 
on the strength of certain assignments that God gave them. There are ministries that God entered a personal covenant with them. It's a covenant of answered prayer. Let me tell you, one of the covenants that is a koinonia is a covenant of answered prayer. That's why we submit prayer requests. It's a revelation God gave me. We bring every threat before God. And every issue that is brought before God will command open heavens. That's why you find out as we pray, you begin to see manifestations. It's not just about spiritual growth. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. Let me tell you, God does not answer me ministerially just because I am anointed. There is a covenant. That's why you hear us sing that song, My Altar is calling you. There is an altar. There is a secret place. One covenant we have with God in this ministry is that we will never beg for bread. Are we together? God gave me an instruction one time and I put one 1,000 naira on the ground. Plenty. Up to 100,000. And the Lord said, walk on it and pray. And I walked on it and prayed through the night. It was a covenant of wealth. Not personal covenant. A covenant that covered everything. That no matter what it is, God will shake the heavens and raise helpers. That's why you hear testimonies like this, our brother. It's not a result from personal faith. He's even surprised. Where will 7.5 million come? It's a power of covenant. At a point in our prayer tonight, we will pray. Not on the strength of your personal faith. Lord, remember the ministry I'm part of. Lord, remember what I'm doing. I'm showing you deep keys. So you don't just pray foolishly and not get results. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My secret place is calling you. Oh God. Take my praise. Take my praise, it's calling you. Yeah. Take my praise, take my praise, it's calling you. One more time, let's sing it. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My Hallelujah. Praise God. We are going to pray. Listen. The first prayer point for time's sake. We are going to be challenging the gates of limitation in our lives. We will pray for Nigeria. But I want you to pray and challenge the gates. He said, who are that mountain before Zerubbabel? Are we together? Who are that mountain before Zerubbabel? He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. Right? And that will happen at the shout, grace, grace. Lift your voice and challenge every mountain. In the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Speak to the mountain. The Bible says if you speak to that mountain, it will give way. If you speak, Kabatalapatia. Oh, I speak. I speak. I speak. I prophesy. I command limitation in my life. You must bow in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command every limitation mocking the grace of God in my life. Every limitation mocking the power of God in my life. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. I command that dagon. You must bow. I command that dagon. You must bow. I command that dagon. You must bow. That dagon of joblessness. That dagon of poverty. That dagon of stagnation. Oh, I command you. I command you. In the name of the Lord God. Whose I am and whom I serve. 
I command you, I command you, I command you. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says, If thou shalt say to this mountain, not any mountain, the mountain has a name, you must call it. Don't say, God bless me. God favor me. No, no, no. You need to be specific. Lord, I am tired of stagnation in this area. Mention it and command what you want to do. The Bible says, declare ye that thou mayest be justified. Lift your voice and pray. Command it. Call it by name. Poverty. I call you by name. Barrenness. I call you by name. I command you. Clear up my path. Limitation. I call you by name. I call you by name. I call you by name. You are a devil. I command you to give way. I tell you, mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. They must move. They must move. There is grace tonight. Challenge them. Call them by name. Rakatatata. They must move. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say to this mountain, Oh, I command you, I command you, I command you, that Dagon, you must leave God's people tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we together? There is a mystery that exempts men from the plagues and the perils that come upon the earth. It is never in God's idea that you suffer what the world is suffering. Uh -uh. But there is a mystery of exemption. There are certain things that are written judgments. You cannot stop the judgment. It must come. But what happens is that there is an exemption. When the flood was about to come, it told Noah, build an ark. This flood, no one can stop it from coming. But I can exempt you. Build an ark. Are we together? Pharaoh had a dream. A famine was coming after seven years. Nothing would stop it. But there was a mystery. A strategy was revealed to, to Joseph. All through scripture, there have been famines. In Samaria, there was famine. But the prophet was not hungry. There was a mystery that sustained him. When it was time for breakthrough, he knew what to do. The Bible says, there was a particular location. Please hear me. Hear me. You have to convince yourself that you are different. Don't call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down. Are we together? We want to challenge 
that spirit that wants to include you in the sufferings that people are going through agree there's a lot of financial hardship agree there's a lot of downsizing but do you not know that when men say there is a casting down for you there is a lifting up you've got to believe it are we together are we together Isaiah 45 verse 1 and 3 quickly please media help us Isaiah 45 my spirit is fired up thus saith the Lord to his anointed Cyrus whose right hand I have holden I have to subdue nations before him what did God say he will do I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two lift gates and he says the gate shall not be shut next verse i will go before you say amen. amen the last time god went before certain people in praise when they got there they found out the people had died when god goes before you he makes every crooked path straight he says i will go before you and make the crooked places what straight i will break in pieces come on now that's what happens when god is before you i will break in pieces it didn't say i will open i will break it in pieces and cut in sunder the brass of iron this is a prophecy for you now verse 3 and i will give you the treasures of darkness hold on listen there are treasures reserved for times of recession they are called treasures of darkness they are not the one you see with your physical eyes they are reserved the moment there is famine god will say come there is a brook chariot for you i can lead you to a place i like you to pray and say lord i invoke the mystery of exemption upon my life i cannot be part of the tears of men lift your voice and pray it's for your glory Pray for myself, for my family. Are you praying, Koinonia? I will give you the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches. Pray, you're not wasting your time. I exempt myself. Hallelujah. 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 Look at me. There are two instruments of exemption from scripture. Are we together? The first instrument of exemption is the blood. When the last plague was about to be revealed, he told them, he said, get a lamb. Cut that lamb. Drain the blood. Put it upon your lintel. Whether you have personal faith or not, that's not the issue. Once I see the blood, I pass by. Listen, it was a mystery. As far as the angel of death was concerned, he killed everybody. But when he got to some homes, they were already dead. And so he passed. There was no need killing them. The blood was a sign that someone had died for them. And so the angel passed. And everywhere he did not see it. Let me tell you. There is a mark upon the saints. Please hear me. This thing you call recession and suffering is a spirit. It has eyes. It knows where to go to. Are we together? I like you to pray and plead the blood for the purpose of exemption upon your life and your family. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh, plead the blood. The blood is a weapon of supernatural exemption from accident, supernatural exemption from terrorism, supernatural exemption from wickedness. Supernatural exemption from the assaults of darkness. Every 
no, 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 no death, no death, no death. It's still a glorious year. Multiplied grace, influenced by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we praying? The second instrument of exemption is called favor. The second instrument of supernatural exemption is called favor. Are we together? Psalm 45 My altar is calling you 44, sorry, verse 3, quickly Psalm 44 We are going to read Psalm 44, verse 3. Then we'll go to 41, from verse 9 to 11. Please take notes, media. 44, verse 3. Then we'll go to 41, from verse 9 to 11. Read with me Psalm 44, verse 3. One to read. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand, thine arm, the light of thy countenance. What was the mystery that made that happen? Because thou... 41 from verse 9 to 11, please. Read it. Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, had lifted up his heel against me. Does that look like the times we live in? Betrayal of people. Next verse. But thou, O oh God, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. How will that happen? Next verse. Because my enemy. So every time your enemy wants to triumph, favor is not just for collecting things. It's an instrument for triumph. Lift your voice and say, Lord, let favor exempt me. Lift your voice and pray. The wickedness of men to destroy us. The betrayal of men to mock our God. Including those close to us. They may be family members. But he says, oh God, this is how I will know that you have favored me. When my enemies do not triumph over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be tired while praying. Don't be tired. Isaiah 54, please. Isaiah 54. We are reading the first three verses. We want to challenge stagnation and barrenness of every kind. It's time for you to move forward. Are we together? Want to read? Sing, O Barry, that did not bear. He says, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. He says, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Verse 2. Hallelujah. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. He says, spare not. 
Enlarge, lengthen thy cord and lengthen thy stakes. Why? Verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities. I'd like us to pray. We are going to pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh God, enlarge my territory. Lift your voice and pray. This dimension, this level, take me higher, take me deeper. Enlarge my coast, increase my influence. Enlarge my coast, increase my influence. Hallelujah. 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 There is a way men get preserved. The next half of the month is often the time that comes with catastrophe. People dying like chickens anyhow. Headaches sending people to their grave. Let me show you two verses that will settle the issue of the fear divine preservation. God is committed to his word. Isaiah 65 verse 18. Read it with all your heart. And then we'll go to verse 19. And read down to 24 or 23. Are we together? Everybody read please. Verse 8. Verse 8. Did I say 18? I'm sorry. Verse 8. 65 verse 8. Go ahead, read. One to read. As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not. Why? For there is a blessing in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. So as the destroyer is going around, there are some people. He says, because there is a blessing. He said, destroy it not. Are we together? Go to verse 19. Verse 19, same verse. We are reading down to 23. I want you to receive it and believe it with all your heart. And I will rejoice in Joshua Selman and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her. Not the voice of what? Next verse. There shall be no more then in front of days. Hold on. Premature death. There shall be no more in front of days. He says, Nor an old man that has not what? Filled his days. He says, For a child will be how old? It's in your Bible. For a child shall die a hundred years old, but a sinner being a hundred years old shall be a cause. 21, we are reading back to 23. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. Listen, when the waster comes, it makes you labor. When it's time to enjoy, something happens. But he said they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant fine yards and then they shall eat of them. 22. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. Last verse. You are going to pray and say, Lord, by the blessing, preserve me. The blessing upon my life preserves me supernaturally lift your voice and pray preserving you from destruction destroy it not for there is a blessing upon it destroy it not for there is a blessing upon it 
Destroy it not. Destroy it not. There is a blessing. Destroy it not. There is a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for Nigeria. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are not only spiritual people, we are agents of national transformation. Are we together? We are not irresponsible citizens in this nation. It's obvious that the leaders and the governments of nations are confused. They act bold, but we know they do not know what they are doing. And we are not surprised because the Bible said so. Are we together? But let me show you a scripture as we pray for Nigeria. It's a scripture that will bless you. Shibarakoto Supratia. Isaiah 62. We are going to read verse 6. And we are going to read verse 7. Then we will go to verse 1. 6 and 7. Go ahead and read want to read i have set watchmen upon thy walls O nigeria which shall never hold thy peace day or night keep not silent god is saying i want to move but i have set up certain people whose voice must be heard before i move he called them watchmen they are upon the walls and he says do not keep quiet he says give him no rest ah, till he establish till he makes nigeria a place of the earth give him no rest make that petition make that petition verse one for zion's sake i will not hold my peace and for jerusalem's sake i will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth let's read verse 2 and 3 it's a prophecy about nigeria and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name the last verse Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of God and a royal diadem. Listen, we all know that there is a prophecy about Nigeria. I've taught it here in one of the messages. Are we together? Nigeria is not just a country. Nigeria is a holy land. Nigeria is to Africa what Jerusalem is to the world. Are we together? You can accurately use Nigeria as a spiritual map to gauge the happenings of God. Nigeria is the firstborn of God upon Africa. I've said it again and again. The name Nigeria is a mystery. It was not, it was not just an amalgamation uh, of the northern and southern protectorate by Lord Lugard. It was a mystery. Are we together? There's no room I would have shown you in Isaiah 18. The prophecy about Nigeria that speaks about the people, the dark-skinned people, coming far from Ethiopia, is a prophecy about what will begin to happen to Nigeria. Are we together now? I have seen it many times in the visions of God that there will come an arising of men and women who will do great and mighty things for the kingdom. Are we together? That's the reason why when you look at the map of Nigeria, you will see a mystery there. The letter Y is the name of God upon Nigeria. It's a coded language. It's not River Niger and Benue. Listen, it is a code like Julius Baga will build a building and put their mark. He put his mark upon Nigeria 
Water is one of the five elements of the supernatural through which God speaks to men. And he used water to write his name. And that confluence meets in a place called Lokota. The word Ja is the ancient name. Yah is God's own name. It's not the name of a state. It's God's prophecy about Nigeria. Lift your voice and say, Lord, it's time for the prophetic destiny of this nation to arise. Lift your voice and pray. Nigeria, God's firstborn. Nigeria, the holy land. God's land. Nigeria, God's own nation. Nigeria, God's own nation. Lord, we command every spirit. Lord, we command every power. We prophesy to the north. We prophesy to the east. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Every kingdom has a headquarters. The headquarters in every kingdom is the spiritual point of reference the throne room is the point of reference in heaven everything in heaven emanates from the throne room it is god's administrative center of activity are we together washington dc is the administrative center abuja is the administrative center prophetically speaking god has a prophetic center in mount zion the side of the north the city of the great king there is a location men can stand and prophesy from that point he says promotion comes not from the east or the west or the south he never mentioned the north the bible says he had compounds this mountain long enough he said turn ye northwards even in geography there is what they call true north there is a mystery to it we are standing here in the north prophetically speaking we have a territorial advantage listen i want you to take advantage i'm teaching you deep prophetic mysteries of intercession you don't just pray foolishly your soil is matching the north the earth is one of the elements of the supernatural there are five of them the first is the wind responsible for sound the second is fire the third is water the fourth is the earth the fifth is light. Every spiritual communication of God comes through these conduits. And the earth is a universal point of contact. We are standing in the north. From this point, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. i like us to prophesy to the borders of Nigeria. We are standing upon the north. The side of the north. The city of the great king. Stretch your hands to the heavens. Speak to the gates. We call our gates peace. We command the spiritual borders of this nation to be secured, secured from terrorism. We command peace upon our walls. Upon our gates, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We we'll soon round up. We are praying. I want us to pray for our families. Many of our family members are confused. No matter how much you succeed in life. If your family members don't catch along, they will draw you back. Are we together? Are we together? We are going to pray. There are many families suffering. You see a family of 10 people, only one breadwinner. It's a cause. Are we together? It's a cause. But we are going to pray. There are many families that are dead. Once upon a time they were rich. Once upon a time they were blessed. Once upon a time they were working now they were dead in Ezekiel 37 it says son of man
can these bones live they were an army they were a family one time but something happened and they died they lost their structure but he says son of man if you want them to come to life prophesy he said i prophesied as i was commanded the instrument we will use in our families right now is prophecy i like you to prophetically call everything dead in your family they can live again open your mouth and prophesy open your mouth and prophesy i call every dead thing in my family come back to life come back to life every dead business come back to life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, look up, please. We're rounding up. We're coming back to ourselves now to pray. Please listen. I have taught us again and again. There is a law that governs greatness. Please hear me. There is a law that governs being relevant. As powerful as prayer is. The Bible says, the gift of a man make it room for him the gift of a man the price to come out of the realm of struggle is the price to ascend in value for as long as you are on the begging side you will remain a slave forever are we together for as long as you are in the begging side please hear me i don't want to fool you not everybody is feeling the heat in Nigeria. There are people whose value and gift is too great for them to feel any heat. Are we together? There are people, this is the best year so far for them. No, 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 I, I'm not saying by faith. It literally is. Every day is Christmas for them. Because their gift cannot but open doors. Listen, the greatest gift a man can have is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You don't refrigerate it. You don't have to wear suits for it to work. It doesn't need battery. It doesn't need voting. Oh, come on. A man who pays the price to carry the power of the Holy Ghost is a man who will never beg for bread. A man who will never die in complex. Seek for a man who is discreet and wise. That you may set him over the affairs of Egypt. And they checked around. There was no man anointed enough. Except Joseph. And at once he became a prime minister. Are we together? Everybody needs the power, the unction. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. With all due respect and with all humility and to the glory of God, I will never beg till Jesus comes. It will never, it's not, no, 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 no. It's not a prophecy. I'm not prophesying. I'm telling you what will never happen under the sun again. Even if one gallon of oil is 10,000, I will never beg again. You know why? Because for as long as there is one demon roaming around the earth, my life is still useful. You may not like me, but there is a treasure in earthen vessels. And every time you are buffeted by hell, you will need what I represent. Question. Who is ready to pay you for what you carry? If there is no man willing to pay you for what you carry, you will feel the heat of what is happening in this country. I don't want to deceive you. We cry because we think we are carrying degrees. And so government should give us jobs. No. It doesn't work that way are we together in any economy listen in any economy private organizations are the ones responsible for employment there is only so much the government can do and private enterprises are very few 
in Nigeria and Africa and they are at their state of infancy. They do not have the capacity to employ labor and reduce unemployment. Waiting for government to help you is a mirage. There is a mystery. Job said there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The webs of the lion has not gotten there. There is something a man can carry that will make you useful. Men will pay you and call it a privilege. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to go. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Sing it one more time. something upon my life that will force men to look for me lift your voice and pray place an anointing oh god upon my life place an ability come on pray an anointing that will cause gentiles to come to your life their kings to the brightness of thy light Pray an unction from heaven, an ability that makes me an endangered species, an unction from the throne room that will make men seek me. Pray, 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 pray. Shakata prakata rekotos. Hallelujah. 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 Mark chapter 1, verse 36 and 37. We are going to pray. You must be relevant. It takes a gift, it takes value to be relevant. There is what can make men look for you. You have been looking for men. Stop looking for men. Look for grace. Grow to become valuable. Are we ready? No, no, no. Not Proverbs 18:16. That's not what I said. Mark chapter 1, please. Mark 1, 36, 37. He said, And Simon and they that were with him did what? Followed after him. And this is what happened. Next verse. May that be your prophecy in Jesus' name. Go ahead and read it. One to read. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. What is it that you must carry that will make men look for you? They will travel from Lagos and say, Pastor Alpha, you are the only one carrying what I need. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, every potential locked up in me, every gifting, every idea that will make men look for me to come with their treasures, to come with their bounties every unction every prophetic anointing every healing anointing every teaching grace every entrepreneurial ability every leadership ability every intellectual prowess that will force men to look for me I cry for a release I cry for an activation. I'm tired of looking for help. I am tired of begging men. Oh God, activate a grace upon my life. Shabakatata. Pray from your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're rounding up. We're going to sing this song, God's Ability. Sing it with all your heart and I want to prophesy upon you. 
Are we together? There is an unction that can come upon you, can come upon your business, can come upon your academics, can come upon your life. You may be gifted, but is your gift anointed? It's one thing to be gifted, but it's another thing for that gift to have an anointing. When little brings much, it is anointed. When much brings much, it is scientific. When much brings little, it is demonic. But when little brings much, it has to be supernatural. lifting this ministry recession proof pain proof stress proof by the unction of the spirit rising like an edifice as though satan does not exist by a mystery no gate of hell can unravel what do you mean? it's god's ability god's ability is working in me. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you, but I want to speak some blessings upon you. It says, Early will I seek you to see your power and your glory in my life as I have seen in the sanctuary. It's one thing to see the hand of God in a sanctuary, help her please. And then it's another thing to see it in your life. It's one thing to see God move in Koinonia. But it's another thing to see it work in your life. I want to pray for you. No, no. Something must land in your life. Please. I want you to believe this with all your heart. One of the gifts that God has given us in this ministry is the gift of helpers. We never raise a voice to cry without somebody answering. And it was a light God gave me. It says you will call on man and a nation will answer. I want to pray for you. Kabaratakaya. There is an unction that makes men come to your aid. In the name of Jesus, right now by the power of the Holy Ghost, in this night of prayer, I release that anointing all over the building, inside and outside. Receive that anointing right now. Receive that anointing right now. Receive that unction right now. The unction that draws help us. I tell you, fire is falling on people. The unction from heaven that calls helpers to your life. Strange helpers. Hallelujah. We are still praying. We are rounding up this prayer session. I want to pray for you. Brothers and sisters, if I tell you I do not know what the favor of God looks like, I will be lying to you. There is such a thing called the Esther anointing. God gave me this revelation in 2010 that there is an anointing called the Esther anointing. The Bible says Esther found favor on everyone who looked at her. It was like a cloth she was wearing. Once you look at them, the mantle comes upon you. You must favor them. Listen. There is such a grace when men make contact for as long as their eyes can see you something must force resources from them i pray for you in the name of the lord god of heaven by the mystery of favor i see this falling on people receive the esther anointing now 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 receive the esther anointing enough is enough i prophesy it inside outside Everywhere online, receive the Esther anointing. 
Katapaka. The Ketelekata. The Esther anointing. Strange favor. Strange testimony. Strange favor. I prophesy it. Let it enter your spirit. I activate it. Let it work in your life. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Papatalakata. Strange favor. Listen. If you want to pay your way through life, you will die young. It's not about being rich. It's about being favored. It's not all about money. There are some things money cannot do. Are we together? Favor. We are going to pray for speed. Speed. It's a grace that makes men run and do so much in a short time. Listen. There is a cause of retrogression in many families and many lives. It's not that they are stagnated, but they are moving too slow. When a man buys his first car at 70 years, it's not a testimony. Are we together? When our parents at 65 are still looking for money to complete Lintel, it's a cause. Many parents are waiting for their children to build for them. But the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I want to pray for you. There is such a thing as speed. There is such a thing as speed. Some of us are moving. God is helping us. But if you are to be sincere, your pace is slow. Financially, it's too slow. In every wise, ministerially, it's too slow. Entrepreneurially, it's too slow. It's too slow. Are we together? A woman can give birth. To give birth to three children in 20 years is not a testimony. Are we together? You take in five years after your marriage, first child. Seven years later, that's when you can take in again. Nine years later, that's when the third one comes. You are now using your pension to pay the secondary school fees of, of children. It's a cost. Are we together? The Lord must send speed to our lives. Some of us, the, the things you plan from January till now, not one. You have not ticked it one. No, you need grace. There, there is a grace that accelerates men. Are we together? Let me share this with you with all humility. I went to check my list of the things that I was trusting God would do in my life. I found out that certain things that were least for other years, God had gone ahead to start doing them. And I said, Lord, you are faithful. And the Lord said, if you trust me, I can surprise you to the end of the year. That's what God said. And I believe it for us all. We are praying, we've been trusting God for a place of counseling. You know, because of the crowds that come. And just last week, a family, I think they are represented here, just came and met us and said they wanted to give us their whole church facility to be using for counseling at no charge. That's the gift of men. Are we together? The gift of men. There's a song in my heart. I'm not Yoruba. You know the song? Who knows the song? We need to sing that song. Do you know the song? Send it out a beer. Send it out a beer. See you. See you. Send it out a beer. Send it out a beer. See you. Don't worry. 
Protocol, make arrangement for as many buses, even if they have to come back multiple times. Don't be afraid. We are going to make sure. If it's possible to transport, everybody will send you. So don't be afraid of time. Praise the Lord. It's part of the wicked, stupid things that poverty does for people. God wants to bless you. You are thinking, we curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. Focus and concentrate. We are blessed enough to take you home. Don't rob yourself of the miracle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to speak from the depth of my heart. You need speed. This prayer session is important. You need speed in your life. Some of us, you are too slow. Everything you do is like the spirit of a tortoise. You are limping when others are flying. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. He said they will mount up with wings as eagles, riding through the current. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a grace that makes men catch up. Some of you, it's not even speed. What you need is restoration first, before speed. Are we together? Hallelujah. Someone we used to know many years ago, we had the opportunity of seeing that person this year. And when we saw that person this year, it was an apology. It was horrible. He was looking like a thief after many years. Do you know it's a terrible thing for you to be growing older and nothing is growing with you? The only thing growing in your life is your age. It's a cause. Are we together? Don't say you are too young to be blessed. Don't allow the cause that came with your village where the first person to take his head out of the water did it at 40. And they say you are too young. Too young for what? You are not too young for trouble. Why should you be too, too young for blessings? When trouble comes, people say it's alright. But when blessings come, they say, well, how did this happen? I want to pray with, for you. Let a, a dimension of speed that will make men ask you, what are you using? I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. At the count of three, may that function for speed. Honestly, from my heart, let it fall on people. Lord, I'm praying. At the count of three, release grace oh god move your people forward one two three take that grace now take that grace right now help them speed 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 shaparakata speed i command speed where you have been crawling start running start running start running where you have been running start flying Start flying by prophecy. Start flying by prophecy. Start flying. Pursue. Overtake. Recover without fail. I prophesy to you. Pursue. Overtake. Pursue. Overtake. Pursue. Overtake. Recover. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. In two minutes, I'd like you to thank God expressions of deep gratitude lord i thank you speak to him in your language expressions of deep gratitude thank you jesus i have prayed it my hands will handle it i have prayed it my hands will handle it i have prayed it my hands will handle it. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight is a serious night. God wants to seriously speak to us. And I want us to open up our hearts. And 
to receive hallelujah i just felt two or three days that there was an anointing the anointing that would be flowing would be on the strings particularly um, one of the things that we must learn as spiritual people is the ability to understand god and understand how he operates if you're with me say amen it's not enough to be used by God. You must understand God and understand His system of operation. Yesterday, I had to call um, Binga and to tell him, okay, prepare. He will play this for me um, because I was sensing in my spirit that the anointing that will be flowing today would come on the wings of the strings. Now, there's nothing wrong with all of this. You will be surprised that if all God wants is the drums, that is how it is. A man of God can come and claim you know God and find out that you are not connecting and you are struggling. Those of you in ministry, learn this. Don't, don't box God and say the fact that God moved this way yesterday is the way he will always move. You must have the flexibility and the sensitivity. And that only comes when you are a man of his presence. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching on the secret place. Help them, please. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will be. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will be. My altar is calling you. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to be very, sit down, be very sensitive tonight. What I'm teaching tonight is not just a sermon, it's an office. Hallelujah. I understand the mysteries of the secret place and it's by grace. And the Lord has allowed me to share this. And in the name of Jesus, I believe that one of the graces that will come upon us tonight is the grace for the secret place. Hallelujah. Psalms 139 verse 7 to 12 reveals to us that God is everywhere. It was the psalmist that began to help us understand that it is not possible for a man to hide from God. 139 when you read from verse 7 to 12 just write it for the purpose of the reference that God is everywhere is called his only presence the ability to be everywhere are we together i said where can i hide from your presence it's a question if i run there you are here if i go there you are there if i go there even in the midst of darkness you are there so it's an established fact from scripture that god is everywhere it's very comforting to know that that god is everywhere but then he does not meet with people everywhere. Understand this. God is everywhere in his sovereignty and omnipresence. But the place of encounter has always been Old Testament, New Testament, and through eternity. God does not meet with people everywhere. 
in the dealings of God with men, location, atmosphere matters. Everywhere is not conducive for a meeting place with God. Just because this is a New Testament and Christ has died and all of that, the veil has been torn, does not mean everywhere is a conducive meeting place. Are we together? The concept of the secret place is one of the mysteries in scripture that is behind unusual manifestations of the life and the power of God upon a man. When you see any man, any woman, any pastor, any individual commanding unusual dimensions of the effulgence of the life, the power, the presence of God, then that individual is a person of the secret place. God is everywhere, but he doesn't meet with people everywhere. Hallelujah. When you want to have a business meeting with an individual, you don't stand by the roadside to discuss destiny altering businesses. Is that true? You find conducive places scattered across this nation. Probably this time right now are different important meetings happening. Is that true? And for those of you who are familiar with world events, the historic meeting that is going to be happening between the North Korean leader and Donald Trump. Look the time and the extent of the preparation that is going in because two world powers are going to be having a conversation that can decide the destinies of millions of people. And so the atmosphere, the location, the commitment, the hotels, the hospitality, the refreshment, every detail is going in. That's for men. And then we want to meet with God and host His presence. And then we believe that just because God loves us, atmosphere and location does not matter. Are we together? Every house, every home has several compartments that reflect the value of the people you want to meet. Is that true? There are visitors who can come and you just stand by the gate and discuss with them. Not because you devalue them. They, they, you, they have not earned the right to have access to your living room or your bedroom. There are a few people that you can grant access to enter the house. There are others you can grant access to your bedroom dependent on the quality and the level of discussion. God is a God of the secret place. I told you everything that is mighty and noble in the kingdom is hidden. The concept of God hiding himself is a concept that if we do not understand, especially for, um, especially for believers who are not very balanced, this is the, the imbalance that not knowing God properly creates. Because you will want to say, how, how does a God who loves people delight in hiding himself the bible says that god hides himself in light and you will wonder why i mean if god wants me to know him should he not be around chasing after me why make the pursuit so difficult and others even advocates that god is not hiding anywhere you have god once you have your bible you have god you see when people preach look at their proofs Look at their results. Wisdom is justified by her children. Don't be gullible and just swallow everything just because people are well-meaning. It is important that you vet their understanding by the proofs that they are, what they believe they know is producing. God hides himself. It's a system in the kingdom. Everything that is glorious is never revealed. It is hidden. It is your pursuit that makes it revealed. It's a kingdom system. It's not even just for God. When you buy, how many of you have bought an expensive gadget? Do they give you the phone just like that? No. If you buy a phone or a television, sometimes it's amazing how small the gadget is. And then you see how big the, um, what do you call it now? Whatever it is, there's, there's Dunlop there. There's another line, there's another instruction written in German, written in Chinese, written in English, written in another language. And all those details just for that little thing. I've gotten a few gadgets in my life and I've been surprised at the rigor of opening them. 
opening them alone, sometimes you have to rest and wonder what you cut this, you make sure you cut this. Why? Because of the value. Is that true? So God who is most valuable cannot just sit down and say just because I love you. No. When it has to do with redemption, God is not hiding himself. He reached down to people. But when it has to do with intimacy and our walk with God, God does not expose himself carelessly. He hides himself in light. It's true. Are we blessed? Hence the concept of the secret place. I think it was a school of ministry students or so. I was, I was telling, was it yesterday or when was it? And, and I was telling them that everything that is glorious hides. Hides. It's called the mystery of the veil. Many people just believe that just because the veil has been torn, the veil has many meanings. The veil in the temple torn doesn't mean the concept and the idea of veiling things have disappeared. Everything that is glorious is covered. Are we together? Imagine if your heart was on your head. Do you know what your enemies would have done with it? Are we together? Just imagine that your heart was on your head. Where someone can hold it out of anger and squeeze it and kill you. So God decided to hide it and cover it with ribs. Because of the vitality. Someone can slap your face and you feel bad and it doesn't kill you. But someone holds your heart, squeezes it and does whatever, you will die. And so in his wisdom, because of the excellency of that organ, he hid it. Imagine if women get pregnant on their head. Think what the enemies will do with acid on those babies growing. Are we together now? And so God designed a system to make sure that the baby is hidden and safe while growing. Only revealed when the time is right. So the, the wisdom, the, the ideas about life help us to understand the principles of God. That everything that is glorious is veiled. If someone were to give you something and you check, you don't see the coverings around it, you will return it back. In fact, there are products that they say if you find out at the point of purchase that it is open, return it back. God is a God of the secret place. Psalm 91. That's our text for tonight from verse 1 and 2. Psalm 91 from verse 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The first information that is revealed in this scripture is that it is possible to dwell. Remember, the secret place is not the house of God. Are we together? You can come to the house of God and fellowship. You can be planted in terms of your consistency. But here the Bible is talking about something. Remember, he never said them. Them. It's not a corporate thing at all. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The Bible says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust the secret place is real the secret place is not necessarily a physical location although although a possibility exists that a man can create a location and dedicate it to be a meeting point with him and god but the the idea of secret place does not necessarily mean a physical location. The secret place is a spiritual state. It's a posture that a man can take that allows him to access where God is. Very powerful. The Bible says whoever is in that secret place of the Most High, it says he shall dwell under the shadow. That means God is there. If it is the secret place, you will find God there. Listen, if it is the secret place, you will find only God there. There may be other beings around, but when it comes to the secret place, there are many things that happen upon Mount Zion, the house of God. Innumerable company of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect. But in the secret place is an affair between you and God.
not you and a prophet not you and an apostle not you and members no not you and your wife not you and your husband you and god this is an art that our generation of people as serious as we are we are losing it we have prayer meetings a lot of corporate gatherings and as wonderful as they are many people don't know god in spite of their prayer and fasting because there are dimensions of god that have to be uniquely revealed to you when you are alone with him there are things god will never tell you when you are in a corporate place it's true when you are alone listen the bible talks about jacob being alone he was about to see his brother esau and he was afraid not knowing what will happen so he divided his possessions the bible said he sent his wives he sent everybody say so when he was alone then a man came he created an atmosphere that became a secret place and a man came and he wrestled with that man he said leave me for the day breaker he said i will not let you go until you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his thigh blessed him and the bible says the sun arose and he called that place peniel meaning the face of god because i have seen god face to face and my life has been spared if all of you is seen by everybody you will not be mighty in these end times there are dimensions of your life and dealing with god that is not even for public consumption there are things god tells you that is not for preaching they are his customized dealings that should serve as the foundations for your spiritual stability not everything you receive from the secret place is shareable there are things you receive from the secret place if you share it you will lead people into error because it was a unique communication that was peculiar to your level of alignment it is not healthy to share those things there are instructions that if god gives you and you obey if another person obeys that instruction it becomes the reason why he falls are we blessed the secret place the place of the dealing of god with men men are not made just in church alone men are made in the secret and when i talk of men i'm not just talking of men in ministry like pastoral ministry men are made in a secret place so the secret place is real it is a location spiritually that can also be reflected by a physical location remember i've taught it in this house the law of consistency come mike if the law of consistency is is the scripture that the bible says whosoever you serve the slave of that person you will become thereof just paraphrasing that means that if um i go to pray you will be surprised that i can struggle with prayer because i'm really doing it in the flesh but it's not to be discouraged i will go back again and do it i will go back again the fourth fifth sixth time as i keep repeating that activity i am whatever spirit on earth is responsible for prayer which of course is the holy ghost but the dimension of his operation that supplies grace and the staying power in prayer is being attracted through my consistency you see that a day will come i will go for prayer and live back in the power of that spirit from that day you can't stop praying again are we together it's true even in your sleep you will be praying and wake up because the, you have become a slave to the influence of that spirit same thing with giving give you can frown and carry your seed and god gives you an instruction and you are angry and then because the grace for it has not been given but you continue in obedience your consistency is drawing to your life that grace is called the power to lay it down the grace that conquers greed a day will come when that grace overwhelms you at that point there is nothing you cannot give god including your life 
And like Jesus, you will say, I have the power to lay it down. There is nothing God can give you. At that point, He can give you everything because He knows you will release it. So you can see two people and one can easily give. He can carry his whole salary. He can carry his life savings. And another person will give 10 naira and come back and say, are you aware that I gave 10 naira today? Say, I used to give 5 naira before. I, even me, I'm impressed with myself. That person is operating just in the flesh. Of course, God is, is a faithful and merciful God. But when people are operating by the Spirit, how you know is that they are under the influence of that Spirit. It's not something mechanical again. When the spirit of revelation comes upon you, whether you are studying the Bible before you preach or not, it's only you that will know. Nobody walking with you will know that this guy has not read the Bible for one month. It's only you and God. You will never use the, the, the limitation of revelation because the spirit of revelation through your consistency of scripture has come upon you and rested upon you. Are we together? And because that dimension of the Spirit has rested upon you, you will find out it is possible to close your Bible for one year and yet you are teaching volumes of series. It is only you and God that will know that you have not been opening your Bible. But you will be surprised that you are quoting scriptures you know nothing about. You can open your Bible on stage like this, like I'm standing to preach. And on stage when you are about to preach, that's when your sermon comes. In less than one second. Because the spirit of revelation is upon you. You can literally get up to preach not knowing what to say. And people think you have been preparing for 10 days, one week for the conference. And you finish that's why you see all these things are not necessarily measures of spiritual maturity because there is a grace follow me tonight oh. are we together the secret place the tragedy with many believers is that they think they will know God by reading a book many believers think they will know God just by listening to a man talk about him. All these things are stimulators. But the Bible says the scriptures testify of me. That means the scriptures should lead you to want to know a man. The scriptures are a testimony. You heard about koinonia for those of you coming for the first time. You listen to a message and it propels something in you. Let me come to that place. That's how it works. When your experience just stops at reading the Bible then you did not maximize the purpose. The scripture must lead you to an encounter. When I say things like this, most people think I'm being arrogant, but I have said it for many years that the way our generation is seeking God, we will not find Him that way. We pride ourselves in finishing the Bible from cover to cover and we move around saying, I know God, I've read the Bible 30 times, it's valuable. I've done this and that. I'm in every prayer meeting and you see a lot of spiritually ignorant people bragging around. We believe that the knowledge of God is in the volume of spiritual activities. No, sir. No, sir. You know a man by giving that man time. Time is a component in intimacy there is nobody that knows anything without committing time to it no sir we are used to fast everything fast food fast whatever you can walk to a restaurant now and while you are talking they are frying the egg for you they just turn it flip the burgers you have we carry that same attitude god you are king i'm educated i have an msc reveal yourself just in a nutshell god in a nutshell Lord, in a nutshell, just let me know how the, your principles work. No, sir. That's why we are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Do you know about finances? Yes, I know. Do you know about the anointing? I even know there are seven dimensions of the anointing. Go to Isaiah 11. And we, we do it like we are rapping. And at the end, the gates of hell are saying, I like these people. Continue priding yourself. And then you find out that the emptiness, there is no substance of the knowledge of God. That's why our convictions dwindle. You watch people who claim they love God. Let a little challenge test them. And they will, they will, they will curse God to his face. 
Lord, I thought you would give me the job. I, everything was all right. They even called me to congratulate me. Lord, were you not there when I was quoting the scripture? And all of a sudden, the employment list comes out and it's not there and you are crying for two weeks. God, you must appear and answer me. And God says, that is all you know about me? Sir King Salama Sir King Aljana Yabone say Yabone nakao Sujana nakao Sir King Salama Sir King Aljana to know God for yourself. The, listen, this corporate knowledge of God will not stand the test of time. The days that are coming will require, the Bible says, but the people that do know their God, that do know their God, they are the ones who will be strong and will do exploits. There are things I know about God I will die believing. The rate at which believers vacillate convictions is a proof that we have not encountered God. It's amazing how someone can believe something today and walk in that conviction, write books about it, and two weeks later, he's not sure again. You can't mentor a generation like that. Unbendable conviction based on something you have seen. A man of God that is into great deliverance, um, was confronted by another man and said, look, you are always doing this thing. He said, stop misleading these people. And he looked at him. He said, why are you talking like this? He said, go and find out about my educational qualification and everything I had. For me to leave all of that and be doing what I'm doing, you should know that it's not just that I read a book. There is an encounter. What I've seen is too real. I'm just pitying you because very soon you will need me. That's what the man told him. He said, you are under attack. That's why you are talking. My knowledge has shown me that whoever talks like you is under attack. Some months ago in this nation, I'm not one who comments on things that happen on social media, but I understand there was a debate that had to do with tithing. Shame on the church. Shame on us times infinity for being so confused because a man who didn't have any right just got up and wrote a proposition. It's proof that we have not been doing it by faith. It's proof that it's not a derivative of a dimension of God we've had. That means someone can get up today and say, hey, Jimmy, loving your wife is sin. And all of a sudden, he looks at this woman and says, I know you gave me two children, walk out of my house. Why? Because a man said, loving your wife is bad. We become slaves to the ideas of people. Just because they are bold in communicating the idea does not mean they are right. Our generation is an arrogant generation. In the height of our failure, we are still bragging. You need to know God to survive the pride of this generation. You will meet somebody who will tell you, I'm in business, I don't tithe, I don't give, I'm a millionaire. Keep watching. When he finishes deceiving you, he will crash and repent and start tithing while you are suffering from his teaching. Many people today who have advocated error have repented quietly and they are doing what they once misled people into. But many other people are there suffering. Are we blessed? We need to know God for ourselves. We need to know God for ourselves. This generic knowledge of God. 
that's why for many of us every little thing you are looking for someone there's nothing wrong with someone agreeing with you but i mean something touches your head um please ejimi are you awake benga are you awake promise are you awake uh, pastor alpha who can i call when, when will you know god for yourself then you now text the people back and say pray then they say okay and pray didn't you know is that a news If you do not know God for yourself, then let me tell you, when God begins to expose some of us, you know, the privilege that God has given me to meet people, sometimes I sit down and I hear them talk. I can't believe a man can be this arrogant in error. Just because there's small money or small results around, you hear people talking, being sarcastic or men of God, and you look at that person and you know, I can look at a man and know what spiritual law you are breaking and know what consequence is waiting for you, even while you are bragging. Ah, I insulted a man of God. I did this and that, and I went in peace. Look at the foolish man that is talking. The Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake. The person is laughing. Ten years later, you will see the man at a railway station just standing with his shoes. That's how what happened. That prophecy kept trailing him like a policeman trailing a thief. And he thought just because he was free for two, three years, the word of God will stay till it judges everything. The secret place. I'm going to share with you six things. Six dimensions that we access through the power of the secret place and i want you to be very sensitive this has helped me in my life number one the secret place is the place of brokenness brokenness write it down isaiah 51 17 Sarking Salama Sarking Al Janna Yabone Naka Bone Naka Jada Jada Sarking Salama Sarking Salama Sarking Al Janna Hallelujah Sorry, give us Isaiah 55. 55. 6 to 7. Isaiah 55. It says, Seek ye the Lord. 6 to 7. While he may be found. That's a very dangerous scripture. Where will the Bible say, While he may be found? This is not talking of salvation, no. This is not born again. There are dimensions in God that require timing. It, it, it will take, let me tell you, a man who begins to seek God at 80 years, you will find God, but there are dimensions. The remaining lifetime you have will not afford you to grow and transit and metamorphose spiritually to access certain dimensions of God. He says, seek him early while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seven. He says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to God for he will abundantly pardon. Brokenness. Let me tell you this. Brokenness um, is not necessarily for sinners. Pride has almost killed men of God in our generation this holier than thou mentality whenever i talk about brokenness like this there are people who just say hey, it doesn't let's get to power part listen brokenness is a state of the heart that declares your consistent dependence on god the bible says a broken and a contrite spirit god will not despise do you know why many of us although we feel qualified we never find god because we believe that standing in our self-righteousness based on what we believe we have and know god should anoint me brokenness brokenness show me a man that can be broken
broken towards God. I show you a man who the devil will never have access to him. Look at David. Moses was a man who walked with God very faithfully. The Bible says he was the meekest man on earth. Yet, Moses could not enter the promised land. Do you know that? Just because God told him to speak to the rock and out of anger that was justified, he took a staff and hit the rock. God said, that's it, you are not going. He joined all the other people who could not make the promised land. But here is David. Search me, O oh God. Let me tell you the posture of those that God will use in this generation. Search me, O oh God, and try my heart. He says, if there is any wicked way in me, you don't have to manifest it yet. It can be there, waiting until you have an estate. Nobody knows that one day you can insult a woman the age of your mother. You are not yet rich. So you will think that just because I'm an obedient young man, who would have known that David one day will kill Uriah and sleep with Bathsheba? Put a man's death sentence and say, go and die. A nice shepherd boy. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I open my heart. Such it. Brokenness. It's a language that our generation hates. But let me tell you, it is the secret. The number one proof that you are a man of the secret place is that consistently, it is not sin that destroys men. It is the pride of an unbroken heart before God. It is not weakness and limitation that destroys men. It is the pride of an unbroken heart. Nebuchadnezzar was brought to his knees until he was broken. Pharaoh was brought to his knees until he was broken. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm not ashamed that whatever you find in my heart, but I come to you just as I am. Let there be a brokenness. Sarking Aljana Yabone Nakao Sujada Ne Nakao Sarking Salama Sarking Aljana Yabone Nakao Psalm 139, verse 23. Brokenness. One big key in my life. Show me a man that is broken and contrite before God. I show you a man whose rising cannot be stopped by any cause, any gates, whatever it is. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart like a man knows his wife. Know my heart. He said, try me and know my thoughts. 24. He said, and see if there be any wicked way and lead me to the way everlasting. That's a man before God. That's, that's the posture that can bring the presence of God, attract the presence of God to a man. Every time we stand before God, believe it. Lord, why are you using this man? There are people who see certain of our orthodox pastors and they stand as young people full of themselves and say, this, this reverend, this man, he doesn't even speak English well. Why is God using him? Why is the man rising? Whereas I am here, I'm a fasting giant. I have this knowledge. I have that. I have this. And yet the ministry does not grow. Do you know why? Because that man is not sound in the world and he knows it. So he goes to God and says, Lord, if you depend on my teaching, these members will not grow. I come to you with my limited revelation. Can your grace speak for me? And God says, the little prayer you pray for the members, I will amplify it because it's coming from a broken heart. Let me tell you, pride kills. When you see people arrogant for a long time, they have left the secret place. I can know 
whether you are one who is of the secret place by the consistency of self glorification and pride if up to one month in your life passes without you seeing a need to spend time with God alone it's a sign your life is under attack hear me if you're a man of God here listen twice don't be carried away by some of these little accolades in ministry Oh, they invited me here. I went to this country. A senator met with me. He said, you are the greatest man of God in the world. While they are saying that, keep your ears to the throne. Lord, what are you saying? In the midst of that club, God can say, finish that meeting and let's meet where we usually meet. You will enter there and God will never talk to you about a senator. God will say, I'm already seeing. There is... I, I want to bless you with 100 million but there's, there's something I'm seeing that 100 million would destroy you and say God me I just a senator I would have prophesied to God say keep quiet I am God brokenness many of you stopped growing spiritually for a long time you didn't backslide but you didn't grow either because you are doing a lot of corporate things retreat now is, is a language many people don't even know what a retreat is they think retreat is fasting so they just close their door and fast and answer calls all through from morning till night gone are the days when people lock themselves and say sorry you are not going to see me for the next two days please hear me god is speaking to us if you don't practice retreats you will not survive the darkness of today it's true no matter who you are retreats Retreat is not when you gas out spiritually and you see that Kai, no grace is working in your life. No, you must find time. I'm busy, I'm busy is a trap of the devil. No, if police arrest you now, you are not too busy to attend to the people. If an ambrober detains you somewhere, you will say, ambrober, I'm busy, come the day I'm free. The power of brokenness. Have you come to a position where the secret place has broken you? Read you off your pride and everything. You know there is no brokenness by how we speak. Uh, the other day, someone just called me and is that I don't want to talk too much, but ah, at my level now, you know, then we now wrap it up with a religious all glory to God. It's a lie. It's a lie. All glory to God first comes from the heart before the mouth. Hallelujah. Is God speaking to us now? Some of us need to find time just by this message. God is telling you, I love you, but you have, you have worshipped me corporately. But that fellowship we used to have, something is wrong. Return to it, oh. Return to it. Return to it. That fellowship is not there again. Even when you didn't have money for hotel, you were having time for God. Now that you can pay for any hotel or any place to stay with God, you are no longer spending time. We only run to God when there is trouble. Then we just run and say, God, I've come again. Is it not you? You are God, I'm a man. But let's not go. Lord, I come to you. I stand before you. And I know that it is by your mercy and by your grace. Lord, I thank you. David, a man after, not God's money. You can be after God's money. You can be after God's anointing. You can be after God's fame. But a man after God's heart. Please, I'd like us to write it if you are writing. I return to the place of brokenness. Genuine brokenness. It will show in our conversations when we are broken you always acknowledge that i am what i am by the grace of god there are arrogant statements especially from we men of god that are testaments of our absenting ourselves from the secret place number two please take it down for me the secret place is the place where we find the mercy of God. Ah. In recent times, I have caught a revelation of God's mercy in a way and a manner. I wish I knew this 10, 15 years ago. Not that I don't know about the mercy of God, but 
the idea many people have about the mercy of God is the reason why they never at all access his mercy. Do you know that the mercy of God is one of the major keys that many people are looking for in this life? Not even favor. Mercy first. Our idea about mercy is that mercy is for sinners. So we pride ourselves that I'm not a sinner. I don't need mercy. Lord, what I need is revelation. <clears throat> the place of mercy. Psalm 86 verse 5. We'll read a few scriptures quickly. Psalm 86 verse 5. We find mercy in the secret place. For thou, O Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy. To who? Not to all believers. Please help me. Plenty us in mercy unto them that sin, unto them that fast, unto them that call upon you. If you call upon him, he knows you are calling upon his mercy. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. You call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond your faith level. Call upon the mercy of God and see Him move beyond everything in your life. When you invoke the mercy of God, He moves because of His, His Son, Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with you again. It has everything to do with There are people who are prosperous even though there is still a curse in their life. That curse has not been broken, but they are still prosperous because their language all the way is mercy. As the arrows that fly by day is coming, they have no knowledge of spiritual intelligence, but mercy. Please help that lady. The mercy of God. Oh, 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 chapter 3 and verse 22 Lamentations 3 and 22 It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not what? Consumed Consumed Because his compassions fail not That means even when I didn't know the spiritual laws that would have kept me I still saw results that were not accounted to my knowledge spiritually. And later now that I know that this is the law responsible for this result. I'm wondering why I was getting the result anyway. Because by the time I started getting the result, I was not yet obeying that spiritual law. I didn't understand the mystery of exemption. I didn't understand the mystery of praise. Yet the rewards of exemption were following me. And the Bible tells me the secret that it is because in your ignorance, you were able to provoke the mercy of if God were to wait for us to obey every single spiritual law allocated for our victory, some of us would taste victory when we are 97 years because our rate of assimilation compared to our need for the result is very low. So he introduces his mercy. I know you are, you are, you, based on the way I deal with people, if you if you don't tithe consistently but something has happened in your life and i notice for four months you have not been tithing ordinarily based on the terms of justice you should not receive this reward coming but you were wise enough immediately you called my mercy he overrides the four months not tithing and then he doesn't justify you but he gives you this to show that i am god he said because his compassion failed not do you know what his compassion is? The ability to be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He is aware that you are a man. Ah. 
So, when God gives Sam an instruction and says, Sam, remove your suit and sew it. And then for some reason, Sam is struggling. Maybe because when he grew up, he was taking care of all his family members. And the little time now he's been able to do something for himself. God is now saying to show. God knows it's not easy because he has gone through pains. And so when he disobeys God, God doesn't say you disobey me, I will judge you. Compassion makes him to examine the condition and say, no, if I were Sam, what would I have done? No, I, I shift beyond I, I'm not justifying this, but Sam, I have been touched with the feelings of your limitation. I still qualify you. This is God. Oh, oh, oh. results that I started experiencing in my life before I ever understood the spiritual principles that control that result. Not many men of God will tell you what I'm telling you. Most people will make it look like all their result is a direct reflection of their total obedience. It's a lie. No. How many of you, men of God, have gone to preach and you were too tired to pray? You just lay down, open your eyes, and it was time for the vigil. There are times that I'm so tired, I leave Koinonia here. And before I get home, it's past one. I have to leave five o'clock to catch the flight. I'm there, there is a delay. I'm arriving, and all kinds of things, and the meeting is already on. And sometimes all I do is just lie down on my bed. And I say, Lord, I know this part of you. It is your mercy that I need in this meeting. And all of a sudden, that anointing comes again. I know that the angel of his presence is with me within that room. Not because I, I honestly took out the time to pray. I will be lying to tell you I prayed eight, nine hours for every sermon for the results you get. It's not true. There are times that all I did, it was in the plane I was sleeping. I didn't even know until we landed. And got up, dragged myself like that, went to dress. And there I'm going in the meeting. And everybody has been fasting for two weeks. Apostle is coming. And you who is preaching, you have not fasted. You are tired. If you stagger yourself on stage. But suddenly... I know what this thing is, oh. Psalm 25, verse 6 to 7. While I was studying this, I stumbled across that scripture and it blessed me in no small way. He said, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Next verse. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. He said, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Listen, there are many of us that if you pray this prayer, many parents today are suffering the consequences of the sins of their youth. They did something when they were young and it followed them forever, forever. And their children's children, they are not exactly under a curse. It's just the rod of judgment that is upon them. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. There are people here before you knew God. Before you knew anything about God. You even came from an abused family. So there was no hope of knowing anything about God. You almost shredded your life into pieces. It was even when you came to university, you got born again. But there is a backload of a lot of spiritual laws that have been intertwined together. Remember 
not oh god the sins of my youth nor my now listen there is a difference between sin and transgression let's assume you lived a very nice life what of transgression violations of ordinances whether through ignorance or disobedience lord remember not that in 1995 i should be tightened i was criticizing men of god in 20 in 2000 i should be filled with the holy spirit and i said god forbid i blasphemed against the holy spirit remember not my transgression he said according to thy mercy not according to thy wisdom according to thy mercy remember thou me for thy goodness sake these are mysteries in the bible that's why some people will keep getting angry with a lot of people you will see a woman the woman is not so wise she's not so intelligent she's not so learned she has been a widow since the children were five years but you see help coming from everywhere mama what is the secret she'll say all i know is one song one song of mercy that i sing all the time and then another arrogant person i went to yale i went to this i went to that in fact I don't worry i know that they will elect me it's just that i'm being patient until this guy becomes president the guy becomes president for eight years and goes you are nothing for you if you can learn to provoke god's mercy when blind Bartimaeus, jesus was passing jericho for the last time he didn't say jesus i am obedient to oh, i've been listening to your message jesus would have said they're not obedient enough you only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete not around he said thou son of david have mercy hold on was jesus the son of david no the son of david was solomon so you will say you are calling solomon oh, don't call me solomon will come and help you but he knew something thou son of david have mercy upon me and then he turned he said what do i do he said that i will receive my sight the mercy of god many of us come from families whose parents were wicked to others and if God is to, no matter how innocent you are, the wickedness that some of our loved ones, some of our loved ones had jobs, they stop young people from rising. They are carrying on their head the woes and the pain of bleeding people. Forget that they repented later on. It will take the mercy of God to advocate for them. Oh! Hallelujah. When Jesus appeared to me, I would be lying if I was, I, I always seek the Lord. But at that time, I was not on any special fasting program. I was not on any special word program. I, I'm not sure I was even studying my Bible. Just lying down quietly. And then he came. What brought him? Mercy. People ask me today, I want to see Jesus. I tell them, I don't know how, I don't know how to help you see Jesus. I know how to help you love God. But to see Jesus, the equation, even me, I don't understand the food. I just know some variables. Nobody knows all the equation. What do you add plus what equal to seeing Jesus? You add it and see whether he will visit you this night. Because you can sit down here crying for an encounter. And Jesus will leave you and go under the bridge in Kaduna. And wait for someone by 1 a.m. who is busy insulting the stupid men of God. There comes Jesus. He says, I am Jesus. And you are saying, with, oh, I'm, I'm here fasting. Jesus, this is not fair. I thought you said you reward those who diligently seek you. Because in the midst of that, he's ranting. Compassion is interpreting what he's saying. He's not really insulting God. He's saying, I'm a confused young man looking for help. God hears the voice of your mouth, but he hears the voice of your heart. That's why you can be saying stupid things and God is answering something else. Because while your mouth is saying something, your heart is saying something. Years ago, I was speaking to one guy who, I don't know, there's, the guy smokes all kinds of things. And I sat down. I was, remember him? Remember that gentleman, Jimmy? Very funny guy. 
he was under i think he was under the bridge in kwangila kwangila bridge this guy came to be part of us and within less than two weeks he started entering dimensions of encounter with jesus there's somebody that was a i mean you look at his life as if there is nothing but in the midst of that what his heart was saying is lord i need you whereas you physically your mouth is saying lord i need you but your heart is saying lord i'm fine by myself god does not just listen to your mouth your heart too has a voice that's why he said try my heart oh lord give me money and your heart is saying lord i'm on a revenge mission i need to prove to people i'm not a failure and god says your heart and your mouth is conflicting but someone else can say i will never tight and what the heart is saying is lord i'm frustrated if this thing is real reveal to me number three the secret place is the place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort oh how you need this in this troubled world let me give you an advance notice everyone you know has the potential of disappointing you everyone i think it's a revelation you need to note today everyone born by a woman born again or not has the potential to disappoint you disappoint you in business disappoint you in ministry disappoint you in marriage disappoint you in every regard when people say a pastor disappointed me i thought he would make me a deacon i've been there for him he didn't make me a deacon i i thought i thought i'm not the last one. what are you saying that's a man for you but there is a place that god provided where the weary can find rest and comfort you're a man of god listen to this i was sharing with a dear friend today on phone in the afternoon and he was so weary and tired spiritually and i was a distant friend somewhere and i was just advising him i say you see this work that we do ba we look busy but our lives are very lonely you need to know how to find comfort in god otherwise if you can't find comfort in god you will start finding comfort in movies you will start finding comfort somewhere you will now i'm not saying it's wrong one day you go to football viewing center where someone that's behind you will go and kill you there have you learned to find rest and comfort in god that's why some of us get into the mistake because of the obsession to share your problem with someone the pain overwhelms you you don't choose who whoever is there for you emotionally at that time you run your mouth and tell people intricate details about your life about your family when you are done with the gist you don't know what to do with yourself again because you have messed up your entire life they used to respect your father and your mother until one day you open your mouth and told the people wrongly do you know that i'm not the first child of my father i i it's a long story uh, my my father pregnanted one zimbabwean woman 10 years before i came and the person you are telling is not even mature spiritually it's just that your heart was looking for the secret place and because you didn't have it you had to search for someone be careful this is particularly for ladies because ladies you are designed to be expressive you always want to be heard be careful you would destroy a lot of good things in your life there are people who sat down in restaurants talking about the contract that their husbands got and the person sitting at the other side of the table was an arm robber the guy had finished eating but he refused to stand up and go because she was sharing him this faithful oh sorry i'm meeting you for the first time am i talking too much and then instead of the friend to say yes they say no 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 i'm okay then you continue talking God is faithful as we, as we are. He even said he's buying a jeep for me. As I'm talking to you now, there's twenty thousand dollars on our bed. Eh? The way the bed is, it's a six by eight, seven. And under, you know that kind of bed. While you are talking, the arm robber is nodding. I say, in fact, I didn't even tell you where we live. Do you know that we moved recently? You know that that one white house. And in the night, that man is just there and comes with accuracy and looks for you and says, Remember, you were describing your house for me. Lie down and it shoots and kills everybody don't allow your mouth destroy your destiny are we together 
there are men of God who carried their church problems out of pressure and took it to politicians instead of taking it to God. Sir, just to let you know, forget all this one that we laugh on TV. Oh, the truth is that the bills that are on our head, we need 200 million by Friday. And the senator said, oh really? Ah, um, and you always look sharp like this. <laughs> That's how we do it. It's your industry. And all of a sudden, one day you go somewhere and say, all of you lift up your hands. And the senator is in a beer parlor watching you and say, look at this idiot. The other day I was with this man and he was begging me for 200 million because only God should have heard that. You left him in search for what only his secret place can give you. Are we learning something tonight? Hmm. The secret place is a place of rest and comfort. Psalm 27. Please media help us first. Psalm 27 from verse 13 to 14. We will read four serious scriptures. Psalm 27 verse 13 to 14. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. No matter who you are in life, because of disappointed expectations, because of our goals and our dreams not happening when and how we want it to be, there are times that you can be weary. As a man of God, you trust God for increase in membership. You are pouring your heart. Do you know one of the most heartbreaking things for any man of God is to truly pour your heart to members and people and not see them growing at the rate that matches your sacrifice. Except you are not an honest man of God, it will pain you. Sometimes when I get text messages from people, I truly, tears fill my eyes. I just can't, because it's painful. The time it takes to prepare just one sermon. You see that? And then all of a sudden, very unwise decisions that come from those things. And your heart just bleeds. Are we together? At that time, you will be tempted to call a friend, call somebody or whatever confidant. Now, you must learn to wait on the Lord. Lord, I bring before you these church bills. Lord, I love you, but the bills in my family are almost killing me. The bills in my church are almost killing me. Lord, I come to you because nobody can understand me. Nobody understands me. They all think I'm a wicked woman. But Lord, you know my heart. I come to you. And the Lord says, find rest. This is where you can be understood. It is powerful to be understood. Unfortunately, life does not give you that kind of opportunity with men. It is difficult for men to understand you. But there is one, there is a place, brothers and sisters, that you can go where you know God understands you. Hallelujah. Wait thou upon the Lord. Psalms 91 and verse 4 to 5. Then we look at 62 and verse 1 to 5. If God, is God speaking to you tonight? Psalm 91 and verse 4. He said, He shall cover thee. Look at this. Come. He gives you a picture of a hen or an eagle. Is that true? You know how eagles protect their young ones. They spread their feather and cover them while they are under they just cover them in other words let let me see let me see the the animal let me see the 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 predator in the wilderness that will come near you i know you are fragile in yourself but i cover you he said he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust then his truth shall be your shield and buckler have you experienced that dimension of god that people can be insulting you. Many of us have not risen to places. You know, for some of us who God has granted grace in ministry small, it's painful to pour your heart. There are times that you can do everything you are doing. And all of a sudden, someone may be listening to a colonial message and say, all these pastors, all they are looking for is your money. I don't trust any pastor in Nigeria. They are all stupid people. They all use your money. It's all church money. You see all of them dressing. It's all your money they are using. When you hear that kind 
kind of thing no matter how you are sometimes as a human being it can touch your heart because you know you are sincere but there's no one to explain to and god doesn't even allow you to explain anything to anybody at such times his presence and he says my son i'm the only person on earth you owe explanation and if i've credited you it doesn't matter who and what they think comfort and rest someone looked at me and said apostle how do you get motivated you are always happy i said you think so if i if what is on my head comes upon you you will collapse physically immediately not after a few weeks immediately 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 success is a burden it's a burden you should pray to be prepared before you pray it comes to you are we together yes success I think it was last year i went to buy suya in the night i was just playing a song and someone just knocked the door of my vehicle i just went down and then i i looked at the lady and she was jumping she said, ah, apostle you buy suya i mean that's my life what 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 sort of embarrassment is that that that's the burden of being successful what what is what is wrong with suya is suya tobacco just that i stroll in the night to just make myself happy you see when you become great everything about your life is everybody's business and it can be a burden it can be a burden sometimes people will call you in the night and you say you are sleeping you say i'm surprised you are sleeping look at that kind of stupid text you see that and it can make you feel guilty sometimes you will think it will enter you but sometimes you feel guilty because truly that time you may have planned to pray. It's just that sleep took over you. And the people make you feel bad and you stand up saying, because of this, I must go for three days dry to prove. There's, there's nothing to prove, my brother. Go to the secret place and find rest and find comfort. Many of us don't know how to find rest in God. We don't know how to find comfort in God. That's why we find comfort in things. That's why we find comfort in people. You find comfort in a friend that disappoints you. You move to another one that disappoints you. Then you go to a pastor that disappoints you. Then you go to a film that disappoints you. Then you go to a drink that disappoints you. Then you go to a club that disappoints you. Then you say, I hate life. Like Solomon, you now say, vanity upon vanity. All is. I have learned to find comfort in his presence i remember one time when the crowds were increasing here i was concerned about the rain and i said lord what do we do what do we do there are several people coming you know several people and they will keep coming what do we do that time sometimes because the venue may not be available uh, the alternatives we used to use then were very inconveniencing i had to go to god look at moses do you know what happens when you are a leader? People expect you to have answer to everything, even what they don't have answer for. They are very okay with themselves. They pity and excuse themselves. But they look at you and say, you should have an answer for this. They looked at Moses and said, Moses, you don't know also, if you don't find a way of parting this Red Sea, we are taking it gently now. We will butcher you here. Make swords from the gold we took from Egypt and kill you here. And, and put your monument. And Moses said, just take it easy wise man he ran to the presence of god lord what do i do i need i need comfort these people are wearing me and he says stand still he said take your rod go and tell the people to move forward learn to draw strength in his presence learn to retreat when people look at you and do all kinds of things you have neighbors that are nagging and troublesome you have people in your office who are always misunderstanding what you are doing. You have people who will bribe and cheat and live their lives anyhow. And you have made up your mind that there's no bribing, there's no cheating. If it's 10 naira for the organization, I'm returning it. And they look at you and say, holy, holy, stupid person. Are we all not chopping somehow in Nigeria? Even that company said, is it not with bribe? They started this company. And they try to make you feel guilty. At that point, my soul went down upon the Lord wait thou upon the lord psalm 62 verse 1 to 5 quickly if we're unable to finish we'll continue next week psalm 
Some of you, this message, you don't need it now. Just keep rising. The time will come, you will need this message daily. You will search for this message and sit down and weep while you hear. Right now, you are not sowing any seed, but people are giving you their harvest. So you think it's your faith that is working. A time will come, you will be exposed to the high sun, the reality of working these kingdom principles. Then it will down on you. You know, sometimes you go for meetings and when a man of God is preaching, you see pastors crying, standing up. And you'll be wondering, why are they like this? Because they, they are closest to that reality. When they say bills, that is not captured in your mind. Because someone else is awake while you are sleeping. The time will come when you will be awake where you should be awake. And that's when you will find out that someone can have a bed but not have sleep. The situations in your life will wake you up. Say, are you joking? You want to sleep where we are here? Verse 1 to 5. Truly, my soul waited upon God. He said, from him cometh my salvation. Next verse to 5. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Ah, I shall not be greatly moved. Verse 3. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Talking to enemies now. Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. For they only consult to cast him down from his excellency. It says they delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. This is a picture of the tragedy of greatness. That when people become great, this is what happens to them. Men can say, well done, you are a man of God. But in their heart, they say, we pray that one day you will have an accident to prove that this faith is nothing. The Bible says to bring him down from his excellency. Then he says, my soul, wait thou only upon God. He said, for my expectation is from him. Are you blessed tonight? You must learn to wait on him for comfort. Instead of running around and harassing people. Listen. Every time situations overwhelm you. Keep quiet. Go to the secret place. Play a song like this or play worship. I think media, worship, worship team. You people should do these kinds of things. You just have 30 minutes of strong instrumentation like this. For people to soak in. Because there are times you can't sing. I wish I can tell you is every time you can dance. Dance. Where is the energy from? I, there's a lady, she may be in Koinonia here. They are burying her mother on um, today's Sunday. I think on Tuesday or Wednesday. This lady's mother died like 10 days ago. She calls me almost 10 times every day. Crying and saying, Apostle, I believe my mother can come back to life. That my mother said she will live long. My mother was a God-fearing woman. You know how difficult it is for a man of God, especially when you walk in the anointing, to respond to people like that. And after praying and fasting, when they came to carry the mother's body, I think from Shika or so, to travel with her, she kept crying and telling them that they, they should leave her. Her mother will come, no, I say, small girl, we know you are this. That lady can get into prostitution immediately because of anger and say, God failed me. And then someone will run his big mouth and say something. At that point, what that lady needs is the secret place. There is no amount of counseling you bring that will touch that lady. Are we together? It's true. What happens when a man of God and his wife is unable to have a child? What happens when a man of God who is anointed gets married and then they find out he's impotent? What happens when a man of God's family is in shambles? He labors and gives birth to children. He's pouring his heart to bless the world. And all the children, daughters getting pregnant, sons are into drugs. It's difficult for that man to stand and preach because he has to continue to be a preacher of righteousness. But someone says, don't bless us with this, your faith thing. If you know God, why is it that your daughter, why is it that your son has not been able to do anything? Brothers and sisters, there are times that life can push you. That even the strongest of us will need to lean to something other than you. At that point, find rest. Oh, my soul, find rest. Find rest in His presence. It's true. 
there are times that the leader send me text messages sir we need to make a decision now this is what we need to do this is what we have to do this is what we have to do sometimes uh, i think it was in the school of ministry or so um a few days or last week i was told that while lectures was going on someone's bike was stolen or so very funny incidents now when you hear such kinds of things as a man of god it can touch you have you learned to rest in god i have learned to draw strength in his presence we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you number four the secret place is a place of revival and restoration write it down the secret place is a place of revival and restoration psalm 23 from verse 2 and 3 please restoration of fire restoration of hunger restoration of love for god restoration of values restoration of your physical energy psalm 23 from verse 2 he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leaves me beside the still waters verse 3 he restores my soul he restores my soul he restores my soul there are times you need restoration you need restoration of fire you need restoration of grace psalm 143 verse 11 psalm 143 verse 11 a place of revival quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness sake bring my soul out of trouble hmm. the prayers that great men pray quicken my soul lord revive me revive me my the situations in my life i can feel life going out of me physically revive me revive me oh god revive me i need a reviver lord the ministry burden is overwhelming me i can't pray again i can't fast again there is a conference coming and lord the finances is not there the energy is not there just when i want to prepare my son is causing trouble just when i want to love god one of the sons that i've so labored and raised is now disappointed revive me lord i feel life going out of me you need revival revive my fire Lord, I used to be a prayer warrior. I used to pray for two hours, three hours. All of a sudden, as soon as I graduated, now it's three years after graduation. Lord, I'm surprised. No visions again. No fire. No nothing. I'm surprised. I misquote scriptures. I cannot even... Appa, no! I used to wake up 2 a.m. every day. 12 o'clock every day. Now in two weeks, I've not even called on your name. Revive me. A secret place it's a place where men cry they come to him and say lord revive me revive me revelation chapter 2 4 to 5 revelation chapter 2 this was the lord speaking to the seven churches he said nevertheless i have somewhat against you what do I have against you? He said, because thou hast left thy first love. This is a word from the Lord to many of us here. Not thou hast stopped loving me. Thou hast left your first love. I like many of us to just be sensitive to what the Spirit is doing. I already sense the anointing. But there are many of us, the way you started with God is not the way you are going now. It's impossible for a whole day that you will not open your Bible, you will not read, but right now you don't even know where the Bible is. That's the truth. You love God, you are born again, but the fire has gone. You may even be a preacher. 
There's no week that you will not fast at least one day. But right now, six months, gluttony has eaten up your fire. Quench the fire on the coals. That the Lord would need to pick those tongues of fire again from the throne and touch your heart and touch your hand and touch your lips. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. Return to your first love. God is speaking to us. Return to your first fire. Return to your first appetite for spiritual things. You used to buy at least a book every month. Right now it's more than two years. The only books you have are the ones that are left there. You are not interested again. You have all kinds of devotionals. You have all kinds of things. There are many believers that need to return to their first love. Is God speaking to us tonight? Return to your first love. And you return by going back to the secret place. Do you know sometimes what God does for me is that I can sit down like this quietly and He begins to play before me the visions of my yesterday, yesteryears. All of a sudden I see myself in the night when I used to pray. I see myself studying. I see those things and they bring a fresh energy fresh energy to me many of us have lost visions no vision you dream you sleep for eight hours you don't see anything tied to your destiny something is wrong yahweh yahweh hey, hey. help me sing yahweh yahweh hey, hey. Number five, the secret place is a place of illumination, it's where the secrets of destiny is revealed to men. The secret place is where you find the secret of your destiny. You will never find it in a book. You may read it in a book, but the secret place is where the blueprints, the mysteries of your destiny are unveiled to you. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, 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 hey. Yahweh, it was in the secret place God gave me this formula that the string must always be played while I teach he said I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp I didn't get it from a book he was in the secret place many years ago. He said, your anointing is tied to the atmosphere of worship. That every time the mystery is prayed, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you. The secret place. Many of you are in one position in destiny. There is no, you don't know what else to do. Because the secret place is where the blueprint, the strategy for your destiny is revealed. Listen. That it worked for brother A does not mean it will work for you. You must go to the secret place. Lord, what is my destiny about? Open this thing. What is the key to my anointing? I know I'm anointed, but how do I open it? Why do I stand in a meeting and not see your power flow? Sometimes it happens. I'm not sure. I try to copy this man of God. I try to do this. What is the key? What is the key? What is the key? How do I know this anointing is in a place? How do I know what you want? Daniel chapter 2. We are reading from verse 14 to 22. 
Then we'll jump to verse 28. A king sleeps in the night and has a strange dream. And the king is angry. If no one can tell me the dream and the interpretation, I will kill everybody. And here comes Daniel. Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. People were about to die because there was no strategy. Next verse. 16. We're reading to 22. Then Daniel went in, listen, and desired of the king that he would give him what? Time. It's not that it cannot be found. Give me time. It looks like my life is not making progress. It's like there is no way out. I don't conclude on me yet. Give me. Somebody prophesy to someone and say, give me time. It looks like I'm confused. I've been going around in circles and nothing is happening. Give me. It looks like God called me, but the anointing is not yet speaking. He said, give me time. Something is about to be revealed in the altar of fellowship that will bring fire on my life. I see it in dreams, but it doesn't happen in my meetings. I've seen prosperity, but what is the secret? He says that he would give him time and that he would show, guarantee, if you give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure, give me time. I will prove you wrong. You called me barren, give me time. I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure. My father called me a failure. Give me time. I will prove you wrong. Listen. Don't let no arrogant person look at your life today and conclude on you. Anytime anybody talks nonsense, don't argue. Give me time. I said I was called into the ministry of wealth and abundance. And he said, with this 200 naira shoe, he said, don't worry. Just give me time. Something will be shown me in the secret place. I will do business with God in the secret place that will shut people down. Let me tell you this. For those who have been here in this ministry for a long time, I said this thing many years ago. You see that? I said this thing many years ago. That's why the name started Eternity Network International. Right from when, from a, a cave somewhere with a bag. Because I saw it. I knew that a time will come. It will be a privilege for kings and presidents to hold your hand. Give me time. It doesn't look like it. Give me time. Between now and then, a mystery will be revealed. Brothers and sisters, when you see a man rising by a technology you don't understand, he used time to buy mysteries in the spirit. Time is currency. We can use it and do business with God and receive the mysteries of our destiny in exchange. 17. Then Daniel went to where? He went to his house. Just like everyone went to their own house and made the king the thing known to Ananiah and so on and so forth. 18. That they would desire what? Mercies of the God of heaven. You now see our mystery again. Concerning what? It's a secret. Wealth is a secret. Lord, why is this thing not working in our family? It's a secret. This anointing, as open as you see, there is more to it than what your eyes see. There are secrets. There are secrets to life. It's the one you carry that will help you command life. There are secrets to favor. It says, and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. 19. Hallelujah. 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 Then, the secret was revealed to Joshua Selman in a night vision. It says, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Listen, there are people here. What you are doing is true you are called. But you will not get there the way you are approaching it. Your call is genuine. But there is no secret. Nothing has been given to you. God gave me the secret of not the general church growth. The church growth for koinonia. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's not charms that is bringing people. It's a secret. It's a mystery. We trade mysteries in the kingdom. You will look at it like this and not see where the equation adds up. But you ask the devil. Find out the devil that will stop people from coming. It's a mystery. 
Whatever mystery brings you somewhere, keeps you there. It's a mystery. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Daniel blessed the God of heaven. We are reading to 22. Then Daniel answered and said, Listen, blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He gave wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them who know understanding. 22. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what it is in darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. 28. Verse 28. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known to me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made unto us the king's matter. A matter that does not concern you but by the mystery of the secret place God gives you something great men are fathers of faith in this nation they will tell you they found secrets when they started people say don't mind them it's five years now they are going as if the devil doesn't exist I passed redemption camp a number of times and I am amazed at how people leave Lagos around and come to this forest i've been to canaan land otter i've been to almost almost all the prayer grounds from mfm to to living faith to to redeemed to four square it's amazing almost all of them can be holding programs concurrently simultaneously and it's all packed full to the outside same mysteries listen when you hold the mysteries of the kingdom i pity whoever just thinks you are joking it's not pride. You will play life like a chess. But there is a God in heaven that revealed what? Please, I want to comfort you. Concerning your business, concerning your career, there is a God oh, in heaven. And the Bible says he has the ability to reveal secrets. My life is full of this kind of experiences where God comes to me and says, this is it. I give you a blueprint. I give you a secret. And make known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head are these. And he began to tell him. Revelation. Let's take one last verse and we're done for today. Jesus. Psalm 25. Verse 4 to 5. Psalm 25, verse 4 to 5, and then we'll pray. Very touching scripture. Let's read it. One, two, read. Four to five. It says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Next verse. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. Because I'm aware you can do this. What do I do? On thee do I wait. How long? Say retreat. All day. Not part of the day. All day. Because I want you to teach me something. I want you to guide me. So I wait all day. Not half day. There are retreats that are half day. Two hours. A proper full retreat. Is a complete day. From the rising of the sun to the going down. You are in his presence. Lord I stay. I know you will come. Six hours he has not come. You are still worshipping. Sitting like a madman. Eight hours you have not had anything. It's just general scriptures of comfort. I will lead you where you will go. You just be patient. Nine hours he's still there. And all of a sudden, late into the night, you are sitting like a madman and say, what am I doing here? Then he comes in his majesty. When he comes, you know he's there. All of a sudden, the climate changes. His majesty is coming to your room. He says, what have you been asking me about? This is for your destiny. Come, let me show you. And he takes you in the spirit of the Lord. Opens a Bible you have been reading every day. But this time, he's the one who opens it. This is your destiny. This is it. This is what you do about your finances. When you do this, they will attack you here. Do this one. Do this. These are the keys. Go. And he leaves. You get up from that vision and say, where are the devils? They come like before, but you rise by a mystery. 
and they say what lifted you the secrets of the lord we don't do business in this kingdom by bold face you will die like a chicken the mysteries of the kingdom listen there's there's a woman now is i'm just waiting i i trust that they would finish i think i sent you the text a miracle happened just between yesterday and today a doctor i, I don't know if he's sicker here he was trained in abu someone died this morning um now we don't talk a lot about all these kinds of things they were in the surgical room with the lady operating for what i don't know and then i don't know what happened and the person just died like that he was trained in abu here but i think it's another hospital and they were all confused because the lady said according to the doctor he said they i sent you the text and a number of people here that they begged the lady said please make sure i come alive and the lady just died like that just died and the doctor sent me a text i think it was around maybe afternoon and said this is the situation and the family members are sitting somewhere just waiting for the report and he said honestly apostle you have to help us this is a difficult situation this girl has died they checked after a long time i said are you a doctor i replied him back are you a doctor he said yes i'm certified i'm not he said he was doing the surgery with um, some other senior colleagues i said Tor, what do you want now he said apostle we can't tell this family this lady has died and i said okay the anointing of the spirit just came upon me in a very strange way and then i sent a text it's still in my phone i sent a text i said in the name of jesus i called back your life i said they should take the phone and place it on the person and then the doctor foolishly just did it like that help her please immediately he placed that phone after a few minutes all of a sudden from the gates of death this girl just jumped back the text is still in my phone Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, 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 hey. Yahweh. Stop here for tonight. Listen. What you call greatness in life is a function of these realities accessed by the power of the secret place. If the devil robs you from the reality of the secret place, he has used one blow to destroy many aspects of your life. There are many of us right now, we are, we are at a crossroad. Listen, when you go to the secret place, you don't come out till you come out with answers. Many of us go to the secret place. We are not desperate enough. God does not visit casual people. Diligently seek Him. That you go back with answers and sit there and say, Lord, do you know, I read the story of Buddha. Buddha was a young Indian who was confused about life and why some things could not answer doesn't mean i believe in him that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying buddha got angry carried notebooks and went to the secret place and said he's not coming out again until whoever is the deity of the universe explained to him the mystery of life he went there and whoever he met there and had an encounter changed his name to buddha he left there as an ordinary person he came out as buddha this is in the negative there is a way you can enter the secret place as a failure and say lord it is me and you all. i don't know what you are going to do but lord my recharge card and your god is in this room i'm not going out for your information i brought one gallon of your gods and one gallon of juice and one bag of pure water my bathroom is there i'm not going out there must be an answer to my finances 
get relevant notebooks you will stay for it let me give you a side effect you will stay for a long time and not hear anything but if you have the gods to insist when he tests your resolve and see that you mean it like jacob he will come he will come he will come ask occultists the freemasons one of the things they do when they are initiating people and all of that is to hit your forehead with an object that is very painful that you can faint test your resolve do you want it that bad and they test your resolve when you are taking a student to nda sometimes from the gate as you the mother just lets the student enter from the gate someone can just kick him and say oh yeah frog jump you are watching your child doing frog jump and say mommy i want to go back and then they say don't mind him and after five years that that weak cheeky like guy can go to a fuel station and harass a thief and say sit down first they don't talk and say i will beat you here you see my belt i'm a military man something happened to him sometimes we pity ourselves too much to get the answers we are looking for we are not desperate enough to stay we want cheap power cheap prosperity cheap lifting cheap influence no it doesn't work that way there is a price are you ready to pray lord grace to pay the price lift your voice and begin to pray hey. There is a prize for the anointing. There is a prize for revelation. There is a prize for direction. There is a prize for greatness. The prize is the secret place. The staying power. There is a prize for a flourishing ministry. There is a prize for a thriving business. Nekata barakato shana malika da baria da ba. Shega da barakato. Pray, Lord, I receive grace. Whatever it would take, in the name of Jesus, grace to stay. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. He that dwells in the secret place the secret place not the public place you are beautiful in all your When I find that way, it can bring glory to my life. You are beautiful in all your ways. You Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I kill every distraction in my life. Everything that can distract me from the secret place. Everything that can destroy my pace I receive grace come on pray Shabakato sekete leva takataria Shabrande katos kalabarakato sekete balataria Tena mase an yarana na bas Tena mala na bariana ba Sena mala na ria Sere mala na na mase na 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 Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, from heaven, let a fresh desire for your presence. It's not something you will do mechanically. Lord, a desire, a desire greater than my necessary food. A desire for your presence. More than a desire for, for preaching. More than a desire to succeed. Plant it in my heart and let it grow. 
Hana Malanda Senamalakato. That you become my desire. Sabaka po sabara da ba shela manadara. Lekete prekete neko sodo balara 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 ba. Hallelujah. Father, open up the secrets of my destiny. There is something my eyes need to see so that my generation can see me. Open up, oh God. Let the book be open. Lift your voice and pray. Pray this prayer point with all your heart. What is the secret to your anointing upon my life? What is the secret to the spirit of revelation upon my ministry? What is the secret that you are giving me for wealth and abundance what is the secret for influence what is the secret for favor let the secrets of the kingdom be unveiled to me Hallelujah. Our time is gone. But we are still going to pray this secret prayer. Listen, we are still going to pray it again. I heard Bishop Oyedeko say this many times. That people reign in life not based on the secrets available on the one God has shown them. The Lord told me something, I think it was two years ago. You know, we always teach that the word of the Lord is powerful. Yes, but not every word of God blesses you. It is the one sent to you. Sent. There were many widows in Zarephath, but a prophet was sent to one. If Elijah met another widow, it would be disobedience. Although he would give her breakthrough. Sent. Sent. The word for prosperity can come for everybody, but you must say, send me mine. Send me mine. It's a formula that will be added to you that will work for only you. Let me tell you, there is an equation in every man's success equation that was customized for him. You first start with the general understanding. It's like occult. You will be rising with it, but you get to a level where God says, no, the principles have taken you. Let me now show you your own. It's true. It works for finances. It works for ministry. I was preaching somewhere and a man of God told me something. He said, he said Pastor, um, we spend so much money on publicity. Is it alright if we stop? Because I hear you don't use... I said, don't stop. Oh. The general principle is that the word must be published. But how it will be published is a secret God gave me. I'm not saying posters are bad. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying it was... You copy it, you will run your church down. Sir, don't do it. There are things God can tell you. God can tell you every time enemies rise against you. Fast for one day and that's all. It's a secret to you. It may look like a stupid secret. But you will stand and see your landlord vowing that if by tomorrow... I, oh, you see, eh, brothers and sisters, when you hold these things, your life almost becomes magical. It's true. Look at Jesus. He had a secret. They took him to a cliff. All that was left is to push him. And he walked through them. Hi. There were times he parted the water. But for Jesus, he walked on it. If you were waiting for the water to part in Jesus' time, that strategy was not, it was of God, but not relevant for that occasion. He walked on the water. And he told Peter, now we don't just part the water, we walk on it. There was something about the body of knowledge revealed to the people then that could only allow God 
give them miracles by passing through water. But now he said you can walk on it. An angel appeared to me and he told me that there shall be no loss. An angel. Why are you confident like this, Paul? An angel appeared to me already. It's not because I'm not human. I've seen something. And they were taken safely to an island called Melita. There is something you see. People can be ranting up and down. Oh, don't worry. My That's why sometimes when people send me text messages, Apostle, I saw an attack on your life. They may be right. But sometimes I just laugh it over. Boy! This man standing before you is surrounded by mysteries like chariots. There is what you must do. The moment they tell you, oh, somebody is about to attack your life and destiny. Do you know what to do? Is there a formula God gave you that you get up and say, Lord, this is it. And you manipulate life from the secret place and come out to your shock. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and makes through our life the savour of the knowledge of the glory of God. What you know in life, listen, matters. We are rounding up. In this kingdom, who doesn't like you is no problem. But who likes you matters. Who doesn't like you is not a problem. But who likes you matters. There are many people who are praying that God should clear them out of the way. They can't be cleared. They are standing there by a covenant that even God respects. They have become gate to a system. The way you pass through is to tell God to touch their heart to like you. Praying that they get up is a foolish thing. Are we together? You may have a vice chancellor or a head of department or a dean. He may not be very born again. But that man sows a seed to a dangerous man of God who has already spoken and said no one will fight you. So you will fight that man and the word on him will fight you back. And you are wondering why is this guy so unbelieving yet immune? Because a word is over him. And if God gives you intelligence, he says, look, this man on his own can die in one day from your prayer. But he was wise enough to find an anointing that shields him. Because of that, what you need to pray is favor. And he said, Lord, grant me favor. And the man says, I don't know why I just like you. Come. There are people you don't cast away. You pray that God will touch their heart for your sake. Not everything is castable. You couldn't cast Caesar away. You could just pray that God will make a man touch him to release the body of Jesus. Are we blessed? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your people. My duty is to expose your people by your inspiration to the mysteries of the kingdom. Both that which you have granted to work in my life and that which is accessible in this kingdom. Lord, I pray that much more than the hearing of the ear, may the word be sent to the destinies of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you right now that an unusual grace for the secret place, an unusual grace for retreats, an unusual grace to spend time alone with God, let it be released to your life. Let there be a restoration of your first love for God, a restoration of your passion for prayer, revival in your life. If you once walked in any dimension of grace and the anointing and for some reason it has gone down, I pray for you that from tonight, let the ambers, let the, let, let the coals of the spiritual fire within your life be set back ablaze in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying this prayer for you, this prayer of secrets. Lord, we dedicate this week from now till the next koinonia meeting on friday lord let men beginning from tonight may they see and hear strange things about their destiny for many of you i declare strange angelic encounters they will come to your room they will come on your bed they will come to your ears 
some of you will continue koinonia in your dreams god will use my face to speak mysteries to you answer puzzles in your life business mysteries be unveiled leadership mysteries be unveiled ministerial mysteries be unveiled the secret to the new dimension of relevance be released to you the secret to dislodge the powers that fight your family may they be revealed to you in dreams and visions hallelujah lord let it be by the spirit of the living god let everyone who came for tonight's meeting be introduced to very deep encounters in the name of jesus christ please don't miss next week's meeting you're here for the first time okay let's let's do the altar call keep standing everyone there are people here we're not even talking of the secret place there are people here in the main auditorium the overflows and so many watching online you are here and just like we emphasized the starting point of any believer's journey is an encounter with jesus you are here and you're saying man of god i cannot say for sure that i am in christ right now seated or standing where i am and there are others saying man of god i love the lord with all my heart but for some reason the way my life has gone i need your mercy and i need your help oh lord wherever you are we we have just two minutes for that, that please leave your seat very boldly and come and meet me here in front i want to pray for you it will be my pleasure to lead you to jesus aside from overflow three that i would just request to walk to the front of your projector stand those in overflow one and two outside and in the main bowl here you are giving your life to jesus christ rededicating your life wherever you are walk to the front now god bless you people are coming let's appreciate them koinonia don't sit back when you should come out don't sit back when you should come out god bless you someone has to be answering this call you're saying apostle thank you for making this decision i've been waiting for someone to make this decision make your way to the front keep standing you don't have to kneel god bless you god bless you god bless you if you're coming please double up quickly quickly can god give me a new beginning apostle absolutely make your way to the front this is a place where you obtain his mercy and his grace to help in time of need hallelujah if you're joining them please come very quickly i'm about to pray i'm about to pray if you're coming come quickly those coming from outside please clear the way for them you're coming come very quickly those of you standing here i congratulate you thank you for your courage and everything lift your right hand and say after me very boldly and seriously please mean it from your heart you're not just reciting a poem jesus is here say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i come before you just as i am i declare that i receive you as my lord and my savior the power of satan of sin of hell is broken forever over my life and the life of god is mine today i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life in jesus name keep your hands lifted lord i thank you for these precious brothers and sisters they have responded to your call and they have come truthfully from their hearts lord i pray that you accept these precious ones those who are rededicating their lives those who are handing their lives over to you for the first time lord we desire that they be planted that they flourish that they excel I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you receive them and by your spirit transform them into supernatural people in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from today the power of God is resident within your life and you begin to hunger after spiritual things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Congratulations. Please follow the lady waving her hands. There's a lady waving her hands. All of you please in concert just follow the